Tonight, the Red Sox face old friend Lenny Donardo in game two of the four game series between the Red Sox and the Oakland A's. Hi again, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo. Welcome to Red Sox Baseball. The Red Sox continue this road trip to Oakland, a place where the Red Sox all of a sudden are having trouble playing, a place they don't get to very often, but it's been a struggle lately for Boston. We take a look at some of the numbers. The Red Sox are 3-7 in the last 10 games against Oakland. They have held the A's to two runs or less just once in the last 10 games, and it's five straight losses now for the Red Sox. Prior to the stretch, Boston had won 8 of 10, and overall now the Red Sox have lost six of the last seven games to the Oakland. Oakland A's. We welcome in Jerry Remy and Jerry. A gutsy performance last night for the Red Sox and a very good night for Willie Mopena. It was, Don. You know, very impressed uh, even in a loss last night with the effort the Red Sox put forward in that ball game after traveling from the East Coast to the West Coast and, you know, guys not available to him. And Willie Mopena came up big last night. You know, Pena is going to strike out a lot. There's no question about that. But we all know when he makes contact, he hits the ball as hard as anybody in baseball. And he got that split fingered fastball last night from Heron for the home run. And then later on in the game, he shoots to the opposite field right here, which is going to score Coco Crisp all the way from first base. So Pena twice in that game last night after a couple of strikeouts coming up big and hitting the ball hard. Now, we may see a lot of him the rest of this road trip. There's another left handed pitching tomorrow here in Oakland, and two out of three over the weekend in Arizona are going to be left handed. Pitches, so I wouldn't be at all surprised that Payne gets a lot of playing time. JD Drew is struggling right now, and it may be a little bit of a platoon situation through the remainder of this road trip. Well, tonight we'll see Dice Kamatsuzaka looking for win number eight of this season. First time he's ever faced the Oakland A's. Because Geico sounds like gecko. That's it. That's the only reason I'm here. The fact is, if Geico sounded like some other animal, like, I don't know, a puma, sure enough, there'd be some adorable little cat sitting here talking about Geico's low rates. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. You can't even imagine the pressure. I mean, I've literally got, like, two seconds to capture your attention while simultaneously informing you that you could save hundreds on car insurance by switching to Geico. Quite frankly, I don't think it's even possible. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. This is the student who goes to the school that partnered with Dell, who customized a Dell Intelligent Classroom that revolutionized their learning environment. So teachers can focus on what's important, their students. Because Dell creates technology solutions with one goal in mind, yours. Dell. 95 mile an hour fastball will reach home plate in four tenths of a second. Watch every pitch in clear Panasonic motion. Panasonic Plasma for the speed of sports. Panasonic, ideas for life. Back on the runner at first. Swing and a miss to elevate on Swisher. It's the second strikeout for Beck at two down. How about a side order Red Sox? Your breakfast. Breakfast with the Sox. A one hour replay of West Coast games. Most captioning for Red Sox baseball in Nesson is brought to you by Apple. Ask about it at work. Boston Red Sox baseball in Nesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, New England Subaru dealers, Foxwoods Resort Casino, New England Dodge dealers, Rico, and by New England Toyota dealers. Hey, good evening once again, everybody, and welcome to McAfee Coliseum in Oakland as we get ready for the second game of this four-game series against the Oakland A's. The Red Sox last night with a gutsy comeback and uh, came up a little bit short as it turned out after grabbing a couple of runs in the ninth inning to tie it up. The walk-off victory here tonight, uh, or last night, I should say, for Eric Chavez, the sixth the walk-off win of the season for the Oakland A's have been doing it in dramatic fashion out here in Oakland this season. The A's taking the field tonight. Oh, 
And as the A's take the field, let's check out the visiting Red Sox starting nine brought to you by New England Dodge dealers. Julio Lugo atop the order at shortstop. Dustin Pedroia at second base, bat second. It's David Ortiz, a designated hitter with Manny Ramirez in left field. Kevin Euclid at first base. Mike Lowell at third base. Jason Veritek doing the catching, batting seventh. Willie Mopena out of right field, bats eighth. And Coco Chris bats ninth in center field. The starting pitcher is brought to you by Panasonic and on the mound tonight for Oakland is Lenny Donato. Well it's been a pretty good season so far for Donato. Uh, most of the time working out of the bullpen he made his first start last time out against Texas and in that game went five and a third innings gave up four hits only one earned run a couple of walks and three strikeouts on the season for Donato a one and two record with a one point eight zero ERA it's been kind of a revolving door for this five spot in the rotation and Donato the latest to get an opportunity opportunity for the athletics. The Oakland defense is brought to you by the New England Ford dealers. They are fifth in the league with 33 errors in 56 games. Eric Chavez will be at third base. Bobby Crosby the shortstop. Mark Ellis at second and Dan Johnson at first base. Travis Buck in left. Mark Kotze in center and Nick Swisher moves to right field tonight. Jason Kendall doing the catching for Donato. The pirate crew tonight. Paul Emmel has the plate calling the balls and strikes. Dan Isania at first base, Ron Culp at second base, and Dale Scott, the umpire, at third. We're available. This telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your television remote. You enjoy the game. Let us know, Chase Amigos, and especially our friends watching down in Puerto Rico tonight. Well, here is Julio Lugo to get it started tonight for the Red Sox. Lugo came into the game late as Cora started last night at shortstop. Lugo at 224 with three homers and 33 runs batted in. Donato ready in the first pitch of this one. He was in there for strike one. Well, the Red Sox from Donato will see two different types of fastballs the curveball and the changeup. Donardo picked up off waivers by the Oakland A's back in February prior to spring training starting for the Red Sox. Uh, this one sent foul off to the right back and out of play. Donardo now 27 years old. Was claimed off waivers on February 14th. Was limited to just 13 appearances last year due to the next string on the ground and by the dive of Chavez. Julio Lugo aboard to begin things here. Wide turn at first. But back to the bag, a leadoff single for Lugo. Well, a good sign for Julio Lugo. He did get into the ball game last night late, was 0 for 2, 9 for his last 67, but shoots this one quickly by Chavez at third base for the base hit. So the base hit for Lugo and speed at first base. 17 steals has not been caught. Lead off single here's Dustin Bedroya was able to extend that hitting streak to 14 games last night this one on the butt bid back to Donardo who throws to first to retire Bedroya Lugo up in the scoring position to second base. Well the Red Sox sacrificing more this year than we can remember in a long long time for this ball club and uh, very quickly Pedroia with the bunt down to get to uh, excuse me to get Lugo to second base. Are you surprised you're doing it in the first inning against Lenny Donardo. You know I honestly think that maybe Pedroia was doing that on his own trying to bunt for a base hit. He will get a sacrifice on that but uh, I don't think the bunt was put on by Terry Francona at this stage of the game. I think that's just Pedroia right there trying to bunt for a base hit. Well, Lugo in a scoring position at second base and here's Big Poppy. His number is rising as you saw 333 the batting average to begin the night for Ortiz. He struck his 10th home run of the season. He's now got 41 runs batted in. It was three for four in the ball game last night. A couple of doubles, a home run, and an RBI. And he chops it right side with a shift on. Ellis coming back to the infield to grab that and retire Ortiz. On to third base goes Lugo, but now with two down in the inning. Well, Donato has very good numbers against lefties. They're hitting well over 200, under 200, I should say, against Donato so far this season. And he gets Big Poppy there on the breaking ball for the ground ball of second base. So two down here in the first inning. Lugo 90 feet away, and here's Manny Ramirez. 
286, eight homers, and 32 runs batted in for Manny. There's a seven game hitting streak heading into tonight's action. Fifty five degrees tonight at McAfee Coliseum to begin the ball game and it's been windy and breezy all day long both here in Oakland over in San Francisco also and very very chilly. Pitch outside to Manning and it's two and oh. As you can see, Donato's not going to overpower anybody. You remember in a Red Sox uniform, he has to be on the corners to be effective. Runs it inside this time and misses. Falls behind Ramirez, 3 0. The league leaders are brought to you by Olympia Sports. Of career leaders against left handed pitching and at 342 only behind Ichiro. He's at 356 among active hitters. That's pretty impressive by Ichiro, a lefty against the lefties, and he's at right at the top of that batting average. And DeMarno, fresh off his first start in Oakland A's uniform last Tuesday. Misses for ball four to Manny Ramirez. Walked a total of two in that uh, first start for him in the loss last time out. First walk of the night for Donardo. Now Lenny becomes the eighth different guy to start a game this year for the Oakland Athletics. Uh, they got some injuries in that pitching staff, and of course they've tried a number of guys to fill this position, and Donato the latest to get the opportunity. Two down. It's first and third for the Red Sox here in the top half of the first inning. And here's Euclid's 346 down. With eight home runs and 31 runs driven in. As he begins tonight fourth the American League in batting average. Maglio Ordonez has slid to the top spot in the AL. The Detroit Tigers hitting at 362 to set the pace in the American League. Kendall out to talk to Donardo. Now the Red Sox have three guys in the top ten as far as batting goes. Euclid's at that four spot. David Ortiz is uh, eighth, and Mike Lowell is ninth. Euclid's starting the night tied with Ichiro for multi-hit games. Both Euclid's and Ichiro with 25 multi-hit games on the season. Side of Donardo, Sutton having trouble with his controls. He falls behind three and zero. Oh. Another guy that's close to the top ten is Dustin Pedroia, but he just falls short a few at bats of qualifying for the top ten. There's a strike three and one to Euclidus. Euclidus one for five in the ball game here last night, and now two for his last ten. Still is it safely in 25 the last 26 games. Up to third, sending Lugo back to the bat. A throw from Donardo. Sox have him loaded here in the top half of the first inning. Back to back walks it on by Donardo. Bob Guerin's team able to win last night's game, first game of the series, and they're coming to tonight's action six and a half games back at the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. With Seattle in between. In the American League West, and a bases loaded, two out situation for the Red Sox here in the first inning. Roll at 332, 11 homers in, 45 runs batted in. That's his, uh, a nice play by Jason Kendall lunging to his left to grab that. It saved a run. Yeah, that's that big sweeping curveball from Lenny Donato and a long way to go to his left for Kendall. Kendall will block the ball, knock it down, and save his club a run. Rick Young, the pitching coach, is headed out there to talk to Donato. 
You know, Don, we're talking a little bit about last night's game, and that game really impressed me from a Red Sox point of view. Even though they didn't get the win, all things that were going against them last night, the travel, players unavailable because of uh, overwork over the weekend, you know, Papelbon, Okajima, uh, changing the lineup around. They really battled hard in that game, and uh, it was a shame to lose it, but it showed you something about, I think, uh, what they're made of because under tough conditions last night, uh, they almost pulled that one out. Not only tying it, but getting out of that bases loaded, nobody out situation. J.C. Romero and some guys that are not relied upon a great deal in uh, times when it counts. And you mentioned Okajima and Papelbon are normally in in those areas. As Lowell takes the strike and it's one and one. Might be the chance here to add to his high RBI totals, 45 RBIs, which has him sixth right now in the American League in that category. Ordonia is set on the pace with 52 RBIs. Roll hits it to left field. Buck coming on. And Donardo gets out of the bases loaded jam. The Red Sox don't score. The A's coming up from Oakland. Low fares to your favorite vacation destinations start at just $59. Book yours at southwest.com. Hello? Mrs. Anderson, this is Mark Brown. I'm from the collections department. Of Hi. Listen, I'm sorry I haven't made my payment yet. I'll, I'll, I'll get it in as soon as I can. Maybe you should call in charge. They'll work with you and come up with a solution that's right for you. When life hands you a little more than you can manage, call In Charge Debt Solutions. We're a nonprofit company that puts people back in control by helping them manage their debt. We'll stop the collection calls and we'll help lower your interest rates so you'll have one affordable monthly payment. Call In Charge today. Bob's Discount Furniture gives birth to a new age in leather, purchasing direct from factories all over the world. Buying a leather living room will never be the same. It's a new age in comfort. Genuine leather everywhere you sit, with not one, but two recliners. Need even more? The matching love seat with two recliners. Both pieces with genuine leather and four recliners, only $9.99. Bob can't be beat. He won't be beat. No way, no how. It's a new age. Last half of the first inning back in Oakland. The Red Sox leave them loaded in the top half. Let's check out the ace starting lineup brought to you by Rico. Travis Buck at the top of their lineup tonight with Mark Ellis at second base. Nick Swisher out in right field. Dan Johnson the first baseman. Eric Chavez at third base. Bobby Crosby at shortstop. Jack Cust the designated hitter batting seventh. Mark Kotze is in center and Jason Kendall the Oakland catcher bats ninth. Starting pitcher is brought to you by Panasonic and for the Red Sox it's Dice K Matsuzaka. Oh, Matsuzaka trying to pick up his eighth win of the season. He is seven and three with a 4.83 ERA. Now the last time out the Matsuzaka was against the Indians not sharp in that game at all. Five and two thirds 12 hits allowed. That was the most he's given up this season and six earned runs. He's giving up uh, 11 earned runs in his last two starts against Texas and Cleveland. The Red Sox defense is brought to you by your Boston area Lexus dealers. They are 10th in the league with 37 errors in their 56 games. Mike Lowell at third base, Julio Lugo the shortstop, Dustin Pedroia at second, and Devin Euclid at first. Left to right, Manny Ramirez, Coco Crisp, and Willie Mopena. And Jason Veritek back behind the plate tonight to catch Matt Zizaka. Well, Travis Buck stands in, one for his last 10. Show his butt as he takes strike one from Matsuzaka. And kind of typical this afternoon for Matsuzaka out there early. We're running in the outfield, playing long catch. This is going on, what, about 3 30 this afternoon? High ball to center field as Coco Crisp comes in a few steps. And there's one down in the bottom of the first inning. Now Dice K with his 68 strikeouts still in the top 10 in the American League in strikeouts. No, no, no. He Number has 14. given up more hits than innings pitched. 74 hits in 72 and two thirds innings. Well, about to deal with a guy who hit for the cycle here last night. 
Mark Ellis who hits a 264. Four homers and 26 runs batted in. But for the 17th cycle in athletics history last night, the sixth in Oakland history. And the second that's taken place in Coliseum history. The only other Coliseum cycle by any other player was by Eric Chavez, June 21st of 2000 against Baltimore. Four hits last night. That's just his career high, fourth time that he's done it. As he checks it. Foul off to the right. Well, a big night for Ellis last night, hitting for the cycle. Getting the tough ones done early, that blue base hit completed it for him. A broken bat base hit for the single. They left the single for last. On the ground and shoots it into right field. Well placed. One on single for Mark Ellis. After four hits last night, picked up where he left off. And gets the curveball from Matsuzaka and uh, hits it to the opposite field. So staying back nicely there is Ellis, and he has really been hot. Nine for his last 13 now. That's why he's up to number two in this batting order tonight against the Red Sox. One on one on brings up Nick Swisher. Swisher hitting at 292 to begin tonight's action with nine homers and 33 runs batted in. These are 11th in the American League with a 252 batting average as a team. The Red Sox start the night third, hitting a 280 as a team. The Tigers, the top team as far as average goes, hitting a 287 in the AL. Now, one thing about this Oakland offense, like the Red Sox offense, they will make opposing pitches work. Second in the American League in walks with 233. Patient hitting team Swisher with a swing and a miss. Pitching has really been the story so far for the A's this season. They're tied in earned run average. Actually, they're not tied anymore. They're now on top of the league. 334 ERA. The Angels are second at 3.74, and then the Red Sox third. Tonight, the American League. Pitching has always been great. Out there in his first year as a manager out here in Oakland. Actually, quite a bit as far as the starting pitchers have gone. And Bobby Lewis was in the rotation for a start. Now they're trying Lenny Donardo, who's being used as a long reliever for them for a little while. And he slid over that spot last time out. And Bob Guerin before the game tonight, you say that they feel like you stretched out to about 100 pitches. Donato threw 19 first inning pitches and get out of the base slow to jam. Suzaka behind Swisher, three and one. Count now. And we'll see if they send Ellis here on the uh, 3 2 count against Dice K. Swisher does strike out quite a bit. Last night they, uh, they struck him out a number of times in high fastballs. Swisher batting now. Dan Johnson waits on deck. One out, one on here in the A's first inning. Swing and a miss for Swisher. No throw from Baratek. Now Swisher does indeed strike out, but Ellis takes second base. Let's take a look at how Dice K matched up against uh, Swisher in this at bat. First pitch, as you can see, is going to be down and out of the strike zone. That's actually the last pitch for the uh, strikeout. So two down Ellis in scoring position now at second base and Dan Johnson the batter. Not 
Watson in the cleanup spot, hitting at 294. Five homers and 22 runs batted in. And for his last 12. Takes the strikes, even the count at one and one. In the last 18 games, he's not had a home run. Seven RBIs over the last 18 games. He's hit at just 197. Hold off to the left, and it's one and two now to Johnson. Spent time in the disabled list like so many of these A's this season. He opened the year on the DL with a torn labrum in his left hip. The first career stint for him on the disabled list. I thought the labrum was in his shoulder. I thought so too, but apparently there's one in your hip. Maybe it wasn't supposed to be there and they took it out. Who knows about labrums everywhere? Is this one is popped up. Third low with a long run. There's plenty of foul ground here, and low almost overran it. Able to reach back and make the grab for the final out here in the first inning. Well, it's left in scoring position. We are scoreless after one from the McAfee Coliseum. Charlie Henry, wake up. Tom. You're wasting your time sleeping when you could be texting. Left hand on top, right hand, send it a picture message. <laughs> Nothing says it like a text message. Text IM Picks and Flicks as much as you want to anyone on any network in the U.S. when you switch to the new Verizon Wireless Family Share Plan. Buy Dad an LG and make him an ESPN MVP. Only with VCAS. Verizon Wireless. Spring is outdoor cleaning time. Here are some questions from Briggs & Stratton to help you select the pressure washer that's best for you. First, what are you planning to clean? How large is your project? And how often do you plan on using your pressure washer? Generally, the higher the pressure and flow, the faster and the more effective you can clean. Also, high-performance pressure washers are more durable for frequent use. Look for a reliable engine that starts easily and has the power you need. For more information, visit OutdoorCleaning.com. We're America's largest refiner, and some of the vehicles we fuel don't travel on roads. For those that do, we make some of the cleanest gasoline on the planet and every drop is performance guaranteed. And our employees contribute over 200,000 hours a year in our communities. We know you probably don't think about these things when you think of Valero. That's okay. Just as long as when you do think of us, you think of this. Valero, the energy to take you anywhere. The casting directors of Sox Appeal have found plenty of women to send on blind dates at Fenway, however, they're still looking for men 30 and older for a chance to spend two innings of a Red Sox game with one of these lovely women. Log on to Sox-Appeal.com today. Sox Appeal presented by Great Expectations, making romance a reality one day at a time. Now, Don, knowing that this was a problem, today I walked downtown San Francisco and I had these Sox Appeal cards that I gave out to everybody that I saw, every man I thought was over 30. And I saw guys from 30 to 85. And I just gave out these socks and feel hard. So maybe they'll get a big bump from that from my friends in San Francisco. Did you get a strong reaction just handing them out today? Get a good feel? I, well, I guys. had a couple of people tell me where to put that card, but yeah. for the most part, they were very receptive. Here's Veritech to begin things in the second inning. You know, so they're handing out all kinds of things here to walk around uh, <laughs> San Francisco. You can't walk a block without somebody asking for change. Tech takes the pitch outside. And you know what's amazing about that too is like you walk, you walk in like you know you have change. Like you don't want to give it to you. It's a kind of strange feeling. You know what I mean? You want to hold on to your change? Can I get it out? Because my feeling is if you drop, there's so many that if you drop like some change in a cup, like two steps later, there's another cup waiting for you. And then before you get back to the hotel, you got no money. We got a plan on that. You got to share with everybody on the way back.
pitch outside to Veritek, and he's headed down to first base already. The third walk given up by Donardo. Let's check in with Tina Servacio. Tina. Done with Willie Mopena back in the lineup tonight. Look, you're going to have to expect strikeouts here and there, but when he does connect with the ball, it could change a game just like it did last night. There's a lot of swings and misses in there. We know that. He knows that. But he also has the ability to drive the ball out of the ballpark on just about any pitch. And when he does what he did in the last, when he lines the ball to, to right center, that makes him a very scary hitter because he's covering the outside part of the plate and driving the ball like that, he can do some damage. And Willie Moe did do that damage last night in the ninth inning, and that's exactly where he hit it, right center field, just like Terry was talking about. That was the RBI single that tied the game. Now, with the lefty on the mound today, the decision was easy for Francona to go with the hot bat because of J.D. Drew's struggles as of late. Hey, Tina, well, Willie Moe now with four home runs on the season. As he checks in at 240. Is there a way to make Willie Mo a little bit more patient and not no. chase as many pitches no. as he does? I don't think he can do that. But you know, the one thing to expand on what Terry said about driving the ball the other way. Drives it to center this time and Katze back a few steps to make the catch. That was a rocket by Pena, but right at Katze out there in center field. You know when he is hitting the ball the other way like he did late in the game last night what that means is that his front shoulder is staying on the ball and this guy is so strong that if he can do that he can hit it out of any part of the ballpark. Now what happens with Willie most sometimes you know is he the breaking balls he starts pulling off with his shoulder and that's why you get a lot of swings and misses. That's why Francona was so pleased to see that ball go the other way. That means he's staying on the ball and when he stay on the ball he's got a chance to hit it out of any part of this park or any park in the major leagues. That was a rockety hit right there to straight away center field. Well, Coco Crisp back in the starting lineup tonight is scratched last night late right before the game with a stomach ailment. Look at 237 with a home run and 16 runs batted in. After the game of the ninth inning as a pinch runner and defensive replacement. And now they'll have to apply the tag on Veritek, which they do to conclude the inning. Turns out to be a double play. Inning and a half done. No score from Oakland. That's Rusty Wallace. Amazing driver. He's also my uh, third cousin once removed. That's his brother, Mike Wallace, driver of the Geico Chevrolet. I can see why Geico sponsors Mike. And when he does well, people will think about saving money on car insurance. Whereas if I were driving that car, all they could think about is, there goes Lauren Wallace. Greatest thing that ever climbed into a race car. Poor fella, he has no idea. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. If you owe over $10,000 to the IRS or state, call American Tax Relief for a free consultation. We've helped thousands of Americans settle their tax debt for a fraction of what they owed. Once we hired American Tax Relief, the IRS stopped contacting us. That was an immediate relief. And they settled our tax debt for a fraction of what we owed. If you owe over $10,000 to the IRS or state, we can help you settle for less, maybe a lot less. Call 800-294-1563 for your free consultation. spin up to 30 times a second and break as much as 17 inches. Watch every pitch in clear Panasonic motion. Panasonic Plasma for the speed of sports. Panasonic, ideas for life. Catch your socks round the clock with Socks in Two, presented by t &K Asphalt Services. Tune in game nights at midnight and the next afternoon for two-hour game replays. Ness and keep your socks on with Socks in Two. Covidian is a proud sponsor of the Boston Red Sox and the Red Sox Foundation, helping to raise money for life-saving cancer research. Scoreless as we head to the last half of the Eric second Chavez. inning. Last night's hero for the Oakland Athletics lead it off, Eric Chavez. Had his second career walk-off home run last night, so June 20th of 2001 against Seattle, the first. And then it was his fourth career game-ending hit. And it came to the 11th inning of last night's contest. Red Sox and A's were tied 4-4. 
And he takes this Kyle Snyder delivery out to right field. And the sixth walk-off win for the Oakland Athletics this season. They had seven all of last year, but already six on the young season. Matsuzaka on 15 pitches retired the A's in the first, gave up a hit to Mark Gellis. The home run last night for Chavez, his eighth of the year, 27 RBIs to go along with the 237 batting average. Hitting home runs a lot more lately. Three of the last seven hits have been long balls. For the ace third baseman. Swing and a miss, and it's two and one now to Chavez. Talking with Snyder in the clubhouse say about that pitch last night, and you know, for me, it wasn't that bad. It was a fastball that was up, but he said it was supposed to be a two seamer down. It did stay up, and he hooked it. It was a ball on the outside part of the plate. Saying that only Chavez will take that the other way, but somehow turn on that and send it out to right. Yeah, he hooked it and it uh, did travel pretty well uh, late in that ball game last night. From Matsuzaka brings the 2 2 for strike three. Chavez takes it over the inside corner. Second strikeout tonight for Daisuke. Uh, keeping in mind the pitch that he hit for a home run last night. Now, watch how Matsuzaka works him tonight on Sox tracks. They're going to stay inside with fastballs. As a fastball up, another fastball that is inside, falling behind 2 0. Oh, a fastball to the outside part of the plate that he swings and misses on. Again, down in the zone and then puts him away with the split fingered fastball. Bobby Crosby stands in. That'll be the shortstop of the A's. Starts tonight hitting at 247, with five homers and 21 runs batted in. He struggled lately, just six for his last 36. For Crosby beating at just 175, although he's hit at 308 against the Red Sox so far this season. Paper of plastic, and Jason Veritek chooses plastic. They'll have to get it off the field. As mentioned, that wind blowing around pretty good tonight here on the floor of the Coliseum. Over and back to make the catch running on a slant. And there's two down in the inning as Crosby's retired. Good jump by Pena, two away. If this week's late starts on the West Coast games have you up past your bedtime, don't worry about missing the action. Just tune in to Breakfast with the Red Sox each morning at 8 for a one hour replay of the previous night's game. Have your breakfast with the Sox tomorrow and Thursday morning at 8 after the Sox take on the A's only on Nesson. I'll tell you what. That had been full packed uh, action of hour, one hour activity last night because there was a lot of stuff going on. And two down for Jack Cust. Pitch hit in last night's game. Cust, the designated hitter tonight for the A's. It's a 221, but it's a pretty good power number so far for Cust. Eight homers and 21 runs batted in. Struggled lately, like a lot of these A's offensively. He's just four for his last 35. A lot of his home runs have come late in games. Have been highly productive. Five of the eight home runs that he has have come in the seventh inning or later. After the fast start with Oakland lately, he has a well, downward spiral. The batting average at 167. Eight home runs to begin the season in the minor leagues before his call-up. 
by Oakland from Sacramento. He the fourth and has now made 24 starts for the A's. 21 of those as a DH. Looks to strike for Matsuzaka and it's two and one. Now starting the year in the San Diego Padres organization. Traded to the A's. The player to be named later. As he grounds it through the right side in the right field, a two out single. And the second hit of the night for Oakland. Fastball here from Dice K and Cuss, who has been struggling. It's that ball right out over the middle of the plate. They wanted to go inside against him. They left it out over and that's with the base hit. So a two out single and it's Mark Kotze the center fielder for the A's. This is returned from the disabled list on Fridays just two for 15 no homers and no runs batted in so far for Kotze. Five games since being activated, Andy in center field. As he opened the season on the disabled list, recovering from back surgery during the offseason. Strike from Dyske, and it's quickly 0 and 2. Cussed over at first base has eight home runs on the singles. He has more home runs, excuse me, eight home runs in the season. He has more home runs in singles. That is a sixth single. Well, you can see by his swing that he is swinging for the yeah, Dodgers just about every time. It's not designed for singles. <laughs> <laughs> he saw that last night in the pinch hitting performance, and again tonight. He has himself a single here in the second inning with two down. Two and two to Katze. Katze with the back surgery is the second time in his career that he's been on the disabled list. He missed a total of 16 games with the San Diego Padres back in 2003. It was also a lower back run. That time it was sprained. This time much more serious and resulted in surgery. Too far inside. Dice had been ahead. 0 oh, 2. It's a full count now. Second strike out of the inning, third of the outing for Matsuzaka. We played two, no score from Oakland. Welcome to Foxwoods. Can I take those for you? Everybody break out. Everybody get loose now. Everyone has a wild side. Let yours out at Foxwoods. Everybody break out. Everybody get loose now. Everybody break out. Would you like these back? No. <laughs> no, we're good. Everybody break out. Meet your wild side at Foxwoods. for new business. That's why Bob can sell your recliners for only $2.99. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six recliners, even in leather. Your choice of six styles, only $2.99 each. It's mind-boggling. So buy now, while the factories really need the business. The competition busted. 
Well, Dice K. Matt Suzaka picking up uh, a strikeout to end the inning against Kotze. Let's see how he works to him on Sox tracks. It's a fastball away for a strike. Then he goes with the off speed pitch to change up. Fastball up and out of the zone. Right back to a fastball away. Cut fastball in, and then he's going to put him away on a cut fastball to the outside part of the plate. So, you know, Matsuzaka throws to cut it both in and away from those lefties, and that's how he picked up that strikeout. It's on to the top half of the third inning, and it's the top of the Red Sox order. Julio Lugo to lead it off. That's the one the Red Sox hit so far tonight. He's single back in the first inning. Sox had a bases loaded with two out situation in the first. Mike Lowell fly to left. And Red Sox left him loaded in the first inning. Mato had a leadoff walk, but was able to get the double play. And no further trouble in that second inning. Only two guys have faced Donato in this lineup: Lugo and Coco Chris. Lugo two for two in his career against Lenny Donato after that uh, first inning hit. First Lenny broke into the big leagues of the Red Sox in 2004, appearing in 22 games. No record of 4.23 earned run average in 2004 with Boston. And the Red Sox in 2005, eight appearances, one start was 0-1 with a 1.84 ERA, and got his first major league win last year. Red Sox uniform. Tough hop. Let Crosby be able to pick at the throw. It was in time. And there's one away in the third. Let's go back to Boston and Tom Karen. A ton our New England Toyota deal with game break. Pedro Martinez back on the mound today for the first time in eight months. 31 pitches off the mound after seven warm ups. Of course, he had rotator cuff surgery back in October. He said it was a big step forward, and he is still looking at August as a return to the Mets. Guys. Thanks Tom back here in Oakland we are scoreless in the top half of the third inning with one down Brings up Dustin Pedroia well, Pedro Martinez in those early stages of his return to pitching as he begins to throw off the mound Pedro will never be uh, 95 96 again but uh, you, we all know that he can pitch and still can be successful even though he doesn't uh, have to throw the fastball that hard we'll be joining a Mets team that is pitching very well this season. They, uh, Second in the National League and earn run average only behind the San Diego Padres. Well, we make uh, that's a team that's already strong, stronger. That's the top the National League East with a four game leader of the Atlanta Braves to begin the day. A pitch a strike to Dustin Pedroia. It's safely now in the last 14 games and during the streak hitting at 462. There is that batting average from 253 to 331. Rolls it down the third base on it. It'll kick off the inseam of the grass and go foul. Grass here relatively close to the line down the first and third base lines. And as I mentioned last night, it's pretty high as well in the infield. Some of those pictures tonight in the uh, dining area, Jerry, of the old Coliseum here without Mount Davis. And what difference that made? A much different view out there. It felt more like this is stadium than it does currently now. Big Mount Davis out there in center field as Pedroia he is retired. There's two down. I guess what I mean is a little bit more character, a little bit more like a, a baseball park than it does right now. Yeah, it's never been a great park. You know, uh, let's make no mistake about that. But when they put that big thing in center field, it kind of ruined any kind of ba baseball atmosphere. And used to be able to look out towards center field and see the mountains. Uh, and of course, uh, over those mountains uh, is where it's very warm here in uh, Northern California. But uh, the other thing too, uh, the ball travels better. It's a smaller ballpark now than it used to be. Uh, before they put that addition in, in center field, it was much deeper out there, especially in the gaps. And at night, the ball didn't travel very well at all here. Two down for Big Poppy. Grounded out to second base first time. The shift on. It's the shortstop Crosby on the right side of the infield who gets him this time. Three ground ball outs. So one, two, three, third for Donardo, who is scoreless from Oakland. What does it take to earn AMCI's best in class certification for acceleration? Raw or 
Force power. The all-new full-size Toyota Tundra. The truck that's changing it all. is intense, but if you complete the journey, you will find your destiny among the world's greatest warriors. The few, the proud, the marines. Baseball sim ever. MLB 07 The Show, only on PlayStation. Rated E for everyone. The San Francisco Giants will play their first ever series at Fenway Park next week, and you have a chance to witness the historic occasion from the Green Monster seats. The Red Sox Foundation is auctioning off Green Monster ticket packages for the Saturday, June 16th game that include your chance to watch batting practice from the Monster seats. Complimentary food and beverages and much more to enter for your chance to win and benefit the Red Sox Foundation visit RedSox.com and click foundation ticket auction link. That'll be interesting bonds coming to Fenway Park and uh, I would imagine that he would be in all three games because being at Fenway you could play him as a DH. Right. Is he nine shy right now. And uh, has really slowed the pace quite a bit from where he had started to begin the season. Jason Kendall leading it off here in the bottom of the third inning for Oakland and taking the first pitch strike. Kendall at 193 with no homers and 14 runs batted in. Three for his last 12. And as we mentioned last night, batting 193 for the season, which is the second lowest batting average in the American League. Rookie Alex Gordon, who saw an opening day in Kansas City, their third baseman, hitting at 172. Very unusual for Kendall, who is a career 300 hitter in the major leagues. And the surprising thing, as I mentioned last night, Don, he's a guy that makes contact. You know, he's only struck out 21 times, so usually if you make contact, you get the average should be a little bit better than what it is. Been frustrated, he's not hitting, and he's allowed 43 stolen bases, which is the most in the major leagues. Red Sox shade him to the opposite field and play him shallow in both center field and right field, and especially so with two strikes on him. He's enjoying success against Red Sox pitching, hitting a 324 against Boston, despite his problems this year. He reaches out, grounds one, ranging is Pedroia from short right. And he throws out Kendall for the first out here in the bottom of the third. Let's check back in with Tina Servasio. Don, we saw last night how fast Julian Tavares got to 100 pitches. That's because the A's were working some deep counts. And that's why it was so important for Matsuzaka to come into tonight's game and throw strikes. Pound the strike zone and, and, and pound the strike zone early. You know, working ahead in the count on any team is important, but against a team that is as patient as these guys, working ahead is really to our advantage. Now, earlier in the season, we saw some games where Matsuzaka couldn't find the strike zone in one inning, and then he would have multiple, he would walk multiple batters, though in that very one troublesome inning. But that trend has changed. Matsuzaka has not walked a batter in three of his last four starts. Hey, Tien, thank you very much. Yes. Matsuzaka has not walked anybody yet tonight and has struck out three batters. So his team is incredibly patient. He walks this one down back up the middle by Travis Buck. And a one out single. It is the third hit of the night for the A's off J.S.K. Matsuzaka so far, one in every inning. Well, two of the hits have come on breaking pitches, one on a fastball. The batter. Second. Ball's supposed to be away. Again, that ball stays uh, inside, middle in. And Buck with the base hit up the middle. 
So one on one on and it brings up Mark Ellis. Four hit performance last night hitting for the cycle single his first time up tonight and stole a base. Skipping in knocked down by Baracek and there's no advance for Buck at first base. The key matchup is brought to you by Killians and Mark Ellis. 511 for 22. Seven games. He's five for 14 against the Red Sox this season, coming in hitting 357 against Boston. He'll check at first base. Uh, Buck does not have very good speed. The be possible hit and run could be on. Discards the mask and handles out number two. As Ellis fouls out, Red Sox finally getting him out. There's two down. You can see Travis Buck at first base. Well, it's the hair, what it is, reminds me a little bit of Eric Burns, who roamed the outfield here at the Oakland A's for some time. And we'll see Eric Burns this weekend in Arizona. He's having a pretty darn good season yeah. for the uh, Diamondbacks. Made some amazing diving catches and some other things against the Red Sox that uh, certainly A's fans will remember. But uh, one of the bigger things was missing the plate in the playoffs back in 2003. And Jason Veritek tagging him out. That would be a huge play. One that I think uh, Ken Maka still sees in his nightmares to this day. And that series turned around in a big way. And of course, the Red Sox advanced past Oakland. Nick Swisher struck out swinging back in the first inning. Well, you mentioned Bucks here. Swisher's had a haircut since the last time we saw him in Boston. Yeah. Actually cut his hair for charity here recently. A lot of Johnny Damon. What does that allow me? You know, I don't know. I've heard other people use it. And I threw it out there and it seemed to fit in the sentence. A lot of Johnny Damon. Oh, yeah. Couldn't just let it go, huh? <laughs> Had to call me out. It was what, just one short night ago that you were ripping my analysis as you uh, expanded on my in and out uh, <laughs> approach to uh, getting a hitter out. So I figured I'd jump a little bit a la whoever. Sat on it all night and there it was. <laughs> Back with a short lead at first. Uh, two down here in the third inning. And strike to Swisher who disagrees. This game with three strike out so far tonight. Swisher was 0 for 6 in last night's game. Struck out swinging in the first inning tonight. Pitch outside. And it's a full count now. Having some technical difficulties tonight with our score bar. You bear with us. As it is a full count now to Nick Swisher with two down in the inning. Travis Buck at first base. And Johnson waiting on deck for the A's here in the bottom of the third inning. The right loop, Pena coming on, but it's going to fall in for a hit. So on to third goes Travis Buck on the single from Nick Swisher. And frustrated in the series, mentioned 0 for 6 last night. A strikeout in his first at bat, but a single here, and the A's have something going with two down. And he was fooled on this pitch, but he does get the base hit. It looks like it might be the splitter from Dice K. And on Sox track, we'll take a look at the last pitch to Nick Swisher. Split fingered fastball. He's out in front, gets it toward the end of the bat, almost a half swing, but drops it in front of Pena for the base hit. So two down, first and third here for the A's. 
Brings up Deion Johnson, a cleanup hitter, fouled out. Mike Roll, first time up. There's McAfee Coliseum foul outs. As Roll went all the way over the tar barrier. I don't know how many feet that is away, but it's a long way, and in most ballparks, that would have been, I don't know, 10, 15 rows deep. And here in Oakland, and out. As Roll made his way all the way over there to make the grab. As Matsuzaka is falling behind now, 2 0. There's a strike, 2 and 1. Cut fastball from uh, Dice K. That Johnson thought might have been a little bit low. First and third for the A's with two down in the inning. And the two one is a fly ball to center field. Coco Chris back on to the track to make the catch at in the inning. The A strand two is scoreless through three from McAfee Coliseum. Introducing the all new Chevy Silverado. Best when you buy it. Best when you own it. Best in the long run. This is our best truck ever. The all new Chevy Silverado. And now, get 0% APR on any 07 Silverado half ton, or get $1,500 total cash back on every Silverado. Come in today for the number one selling trucks in Maine. The IRS threatened to seize my car, my boat, and my business. I didn't know where to turn, so my accountant recommended power tax relief. Thousands of law-abiding Americans have turned to power tax relief. Honest people just like you, whose circumstances left them owing more taxes than they could pay. Like the Myers family, who owed the IRS $40,000 from illness and family emergencies. With power tax relief, we paid only a portion of what we owed the IRS. And they saved our house. You can bet the IRS will have lawyers working on your case. Don't take a chance without your own legal help. I was so worried I was going to lose my practice, but the team from Power Tax Relief, they got me a second chance. Look, you have a limited window to negotiate with the IRS and settle your debt for less. This could be your last chance. Play it right with Power Tax Relief. Owe over 10000 in taxes? Settle with the IRS for less. Call 800-517-4960. That's 800-517-4960. Boston Red Sox baseball on Nesson is brought to you by Nissan, Olympia Sports, the official sporting goods retailer, the New England Sports Network, and by Dunkin' Donuts. Top half of the fourth inning, Lenny Gennardo, fresh off a one, two, three, third inning. Sox and A's into the fourth scoreless. Manny Ramirez, Kevin Euclid. Mike Roll expected in the inning. Well, he walked in the first inning. Well, walked Ramirez and Euclid to load the bases with two outs in the first, but Mike Roll flied out to end the inning, and the Red Sox left them loaded. After the 1 1, chops it softly towards Crosby on the run and in time to get Ramirez. And one away here in the fourth inning. It's time now for our Aflac trivia question. And the question tonight besides Mark Ellis, who are the other two active members of the Athletics to hit for the cycle? And the answer for you a little bit later. One down here in the fourth inning, Kevin Euclid. Euclid Euclid and Donardo not only teammates in Boston, but many times in Pawtucket as well. 
DiNardo, originally selected by the Mets in the third round back in 2003. Red Sox took him in the Rule 5 draft in December of 04. And up and down to Boston several times. And a total of six starts last year for the Red Sox during that period where the Red Sox were in need of starters due to all the injuries they had in the rotation last season. Ended up one and two with a higher end run average of 7.85 in his final season with the Red Sox. And claimed off waivers by these Oakland A's in February prior to spring training this year. Euclid on the ground to the backhand of Crosby and threw him into left field. Nicholas will reach at first base. Crosby had it all lined up, but something went awry, and he's charged with an error. That'll be number eight on the season for Bobby Crosby at shortstop. Plays it to the backhand, and as you can see right there, uh, just goes to the thumb side of the glove. He just didn't line it up right with the glove. One out, Euclid at first base, and here's Mike Lowe fly to left field. And the base is loaded situation back in the first inning. Pitchers. And only two of his 11 home runs have been off lefties. Not to short to second for one on to first, a double play. So Crosby takes care of the error himself as he initiates a double play with Squirtles to the end of the bottom of the fourth. Hey, boss, do we have Aflac? Yeah, we have something else. But if you're hurt and miss work, does it pay cash like Aflac does? Nah. Or let you spend it any way you want, like for gas and groceries? Nah. Or help with everyday bills like Aflac does? Nah, nah, nah. There's only one Aflac. Ask about it at work. Nice try, boss. Nah, Aflac. Don't worry about those guys. I am just so sick of this. Dude, what do you expect? You went with Geico.com. What, to save some money? It's my life, OK? Just a little loyalty would be nice, that's all. What? Having Geico makes me less of a caveman? Tina's here. We're getting back together. Hey, give us a minute. Geico.com. So easy, a caveman can do it. Have you heard about the benefits of a reverse mortgage? If you're a homeowner, 62 years or older, and would like to supplement your monthly income, a reverse mortgage could be the key to living comfortably in retirement. U.S. government insured reverse mortgages allow seniors to convert the equity in their home into cash without having to move or make monthly loan payments. We offer a free information kit and video explaining everything you need to know about a reverse mortgage. Call 800-300-4519. Get the Sunday Globes award-winning sports coverage every week. Call 800-984-5335 today for 50% off home delivery. The Boston Sunday Globes start the week off right. Well, in baseball, you have to have a short memory, and Crosby, who made the error to allow Euclid uh, to reach first base on the backhanded play, just can get the glove down, bounces right back, and makes a tremendous play on a tough hop. And ends the inning with the 6-4-3 uh, double play. So you can't let things linger because you might be involved on the very next play, and he certainly was. Second double play turned tonight by the Athletics. We head to the home half of the fourth inning. It's Eric Chavez leads it off. Chavez struck out looking in the second inning. One of three strikeouts tonight for Daisuke Matsuzaka. A 
excellent split right there from Max Zaka. And again, you know, his split sometimes will break into left handers, sometimes away. This split is going to break in to Chavez. Chavez jolts this out towards deep left center field, and that is up and gone. The walk off home run last night, the solo shot tonight. And it's a 1 0 A's lead in the fourth. Oh, a 0 2 pitch. Yeah. That's a couple of times tonight that Dice K's got hurt on 0 2 pitches. And, you know, the ball that he hit out last night was up and away from him, but he hooked it. This time on the 0 2 pitch, it's up and away, but this time he takes it to the opposite field for the home run. That is the ninth home run that Matt Zucker has allowed in the season. Chavez showing some power lately. Four of the last eight hits he has are home runs. See, I think that was a surprising thing about the home run last night is that usually that ball he takes to the opposite field for the long ball. Last night he hooked it. This time against Matt Zucker, he takes it to the opposite field. He's on top now, one to nothing. Still nobody out. The one-one pitch to Bobby Crosby. This is for ball two, two and one. Look back at last night at the location of the pitch from uh, Kyle Snyder. We'll see it after this pitch to uh, Crosby. On the ground to third base, Lowell scoops it up and throws out Crosby for the first out of the inning. Again, going back to last night, watch the location of this pitch by Snyder. Mirabelli wants it down and away. It stays up and away, and he hooks it for the home run. Well, tonight he gets one almost in the same spot from Dice K up, away, and this time to the opposite field. is empty for Jack Cust. It's not get cheated in his swings and a big swing and a big foul ball this time. Single to right his first time up. Broke into the big leagues in 2001 with Arizona. So had major league time with Colorado. Two seasons with the Baltimore Orioles, 2003 and 2004 with the Orioles. And then last year, getting in four games with San Diego, but again, most of his time spent in the minor leagues as he fouls off another. To the left, it's one and two to Cust. Coming into this season, his major league totals five home runs in the big leagues has already surpassed in this season alone with eight home runs. And he played a total of 70 big league games since 2001 coming into the season. On top now, one to nothing, thanks to the solo home run by Chavez to begin the inning. Again, the one-two pitch. Newman's up now, and two and two. with one out bases empty here in the bottom of the fourth inning. I 
you can see Daisuke pretty much calling his own game. He's been shaking off Veritek quite a bit here in this inning. Ball four. And cuts down to first base. First walk of the night given up by Daisuke Matsuzaka. He did not walk anybody in five and two thirds innings last time out. One out, one on, and Mark Kotze is the batter. He struck out looking in the second inning. This kid won six straight decisions until the loss against the Cleveland Indians. In their five and two thirds innings effort, giving him 12 hits last time out. As he jumps ahead of Kotze, swinging a miss. Okay, chase from the game. All six runs coming in the final inning and two thirds of his last outing. Through 106 pitches in those five and two thirds innings against Cleveland. On a season high, 12 hits. And tying a high of six runs allowed. 8 4 loss to the Indians on Wednesday. at first one down. <laughs> Strike over the outside corner. It's a ball and two strikes now to Katza. That cut fastball away from those lefties designed to have them quit on it, and that little cut at the end to pick up the outside corner. Gets Batsu Zucker ahead in the count, one and two. All major league rookies in wins with seven strikeouts. With 68 coming in tonight. He's got three K's tonight, so 71 strikeouts. And the innings pitched. Up and away. And one foot down now to Katze. Season the fourth inning was a recurring problem for Desuke Matsuzaka. In three straight outings, he seemed to run into trouble in the fourth. There goes Cust at first to swing and a miss. Katze strikes out and Cust, who does not run well. He was gunned down by Jason Veritek. So a double play to end the inning, strike him out, throw him out, but the A's on top now, 1 0. Talking to the cable guy, pal? Actually, he's a Verizon Fios tech. He brings fiber optics right to your door on three different spectrums of light. You got your 1310, your 1490, and the 1550. The light is so clean, it's plus 20 dB hot. It's true quam. You should see his truck. Verizon Fios, the most advanced fiber optic network straight to your home. Get me noticed, make me shout, and stand out. Give me Rico color that always works. I am your idea. Make me brighter, make me shine. I am your idea. Get me in there, make it happen in flying colors. It's you and me, and here we go with Rico. One to nothing, the Oakland A's on top. 
Thanks to a home run by Eric Chavez. The Cox Daily Replay is brought to you by Lojack, the only stolen vehicle recovery system operated by the police. And the throw right on the money from Veritek. The strike him out, throw him out. Of course, Cuss does not have good speed. You get this fastball for the strikeout. And Veritek throwing out his second base runner of the season. Well, the Red Sox trailing one to nothing. As the bottom third of the Red Sox order expected in the end. Veritek, Pena, and Crisp. Jason walked his first time up in the second inning. There three walks given up by Lenny DiNardo. Walked two in the first, one in the second. None of those walks led to runs. This player profile is brought to you by Sovereign Bank, the official bank of the Red Sox cable network. This season leading at 341. And that's one of the reasons Francona used him last night as a pinch hitter, hitting from the right side of the plate. Of course, Veritek delivering with a base hit. A pinch hit RBI single in the ninth. Swing down the right field line, bending towards the bullpen area in a foul ball. This has been used twice as a pinch hitter, two for two. As a pinch hitter this season after. Last year, not having a pinch hit, he was 0 for 6 as a pinch hitter in 2006. That last foul ball going to what they call a black hole here in the football. Down in the uh, section just above where the Red Sox bullpen is. That's it past the end zone. Ground ball to third base. Chavez gobbles it up and throws up. Veritek. That's where all the scary Raider fans are to yeah. have. Huh? Decked out, makeup, and everything else. I'll tell you what, last night there were some scary baseball fans down there. There were a few <laughs> brouhaha's down yes. in that area last night. This is, I think, one of the rowdier crowds around the league. Does not get its due for being as you know, rowdy. You know what the shame of this place is? It's so big that it's not intimate at all. And the fans are so far away, but you're right. They are rowdy here. And if this was a intimate setting, ooh, it'd be a very loud crowd. Yeah. All the flags and everything else out there in left field, but it has a real football feel to this every time you come here. The tailgating that goes on in the parking lot is like a football game going on, but it's on a daily basis. Right here in Oakland. Billy Balpena lined out sharply to Mark Kotze first time up. And Denardo working here into the fifth with one down. Falling behind Pena. Three and oh. We saw him last night have the green light on the 3 0 count. See if he has it again tonight. Grounded out last night in that situation. He takes this time and will take the walk. Fourth walk given up by Lenny DiNardo. And with the eighth drawn by Pena on the season. Let's check out the answer to our athletic trivia question. Besides Mark Ellis, who are the other two active members of the Athletics to hit for the cycle, there's one of them. Eric Chavez did it back June 21st of 2000. Jason Kendall doing it to 19th of 2000, but to doing it with Pittsburgh. It's a little bit of a trick question there. That's not really that tricky, Don, because they both are active members of the Athletics right now. But they didn't do it with the Athletics. No, but they are active members. That was well, election. Yeah, that's true. That really Just because I find it tricky doesn't mean that it's tricky. Well, my first thought is that they both be open names. And you, have, are, the, you have the answers right in front of you. I know. <laughs> it's the disturbing part. Stuns me that you would think that would be tricky. <laughs> I knew the answer, and I still find it tricky. Of course, they always give me the answers first, which doesn't always mean I figure it out. But this with Pittsburgh against the Cardinals. And he is an active member of the Open. That athletics. is true. This one is chopped to third base. Chavez to second for one on to first. Round the horn they go. The walks have not been costly. Gennaro's walked four. None of them have turned into runs. Three double plays for the A's and a one-nothing lead.
EMCI's best-in-class certification for combined acceleration and braking isn't just handed out. You've got to earn it. The all-new full-size Toyota Tundra. The truck that's changing it all. I've got it. We've got it. We've got it. Got what? Health insurance. Massachusetts residents are now required to have it. And the state's health connector makes it more affordable and easier to get. I've got it. Me too. Call or go to our website to compare plans, get information, and choose the right plan for you. Get preventive care and medical and financial protection. I'm getting it. I've used it. We've, We've got, got it. it. Get health insurance now through the state's health connector. When you're on the go, you need the convenience, quality, and pricing that you'll always find at ExtraMart. Convenience. Everything you need is priced right and ready to go. Quality. ExtraMart has their own extra cafe gourmet coffee, delicious deli joe sandwiches, and extra fuels gasoline. Great prices. ExtraMart features everyday low prices and value specials. All this month at ExtraMart, 32 ounce vitamin water is specially priced at just two for three dollars. In every corner of New England, ExtraMart is just around your corner. The limited edition Don and Jerry Bobble Desk is backed by popular demand. Go online to get yours from the Nesson store and check out our other great Nesson apparel and accessories, but especially the Bobble Desk, including hats, sweatshirts, and T-shirts featuring original Nesson design. Shop online at the Nesson store today. That is NessonStore.com. You can have yours right now. Yeah, that should be the first thing you check out and then go to the other uh, items. There's other good stuff, but there is the Bobble Desk. 1-0, the A's on top as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Mason Kendall leading it off for the A's against Daisuke Matsuzaka. Kendall bounced out to second base his first time up. Home run in the fourth by Eric Chavez. The difference in this one. Leonardo has timed the Red Sox tonight so far through five innings. What is it with not overpowering lefties and the Red Sox over the last few years? For whatever reason, the Red Sox have run into some trouble and they're dealing with those type guys. And tonight, Donato, the former member of the Red Sox, shutting them down through the first five. Well, Donato's one of those guys that, you know, you have to think up the middle and the other way if you're a right handed hitter. He's not going to overpower you with stuff. And uh, if you're finally getting that full mode against him, that's when he can be effective. Lead off walk here for Jason Kendall. Uh -huh. Left fielder, Travis Bach. Well, it's the top of the A's order coming up, Travis Buck. One fly to center in the first single for center in the third inning. Get about ten to the first base. He, I'm not blazing speed, but he will take off every now and then. Has three steals. Has been caught once. Total of 159 stolen bases in his career for Jason Kendall. Pitching line is brought to you by Nissan. Thanks came out Suzaka facing his second batter here in the fifth inning. And he'll throw 78 pitches tonight. The one run, the home run by Eric Chavez in the fourth inning. And for Matsuzaka, the ninth home run that he has surrendered on this season. Not the most given up by a Red Sox pitching pitcher this year, Kurt Schilling. Has given up 10 home runs so far this year. And his 12 starts. 
swing and a miss by Buck, and it's two and one. Buck all geared up for the 2 0 fastball. He does get it, but Dyeski throws it by him above the belt. Two and two. Well, Suzaku is used to getting a lot of run support, 65 runs and 11 starts, third most in the majors. Next over with an average of 8.05 runs per outing, getting none so far tonight from the Red Sox offense. Does not score a lot of runs when you lose, and the Red Sox have scored a total of five runs in his losses. As a swing and a miss, but couldn't get a piece and strikes out. Fifth strike out of the night for Matsuzaka. Looks like it might be the split again from uh, Dice K as that ball goes down and in again. Uh, to Travis Buck. It's going to be very difficult to catch that pitch for Veracek because you always anticipate that the split's going to go away from the lefty, but the dice case doesn't do that. It'll go both the way, but a lot of times in, you saw Veracek have to adjust to get back to the inside part of the plate to make the catch on that. Mark Ellis was finally retired last time up after a single in the first inning. All the hits last night, four of them. Out to Jason Baratek in the third inning. It's one for two tonight. As Euclid holds on Kendall in first base. On the left field line, it is curling and a foul ball. Not by a lot. Ellis just out in front of the off speed pitch from Mamatsu Zucker. It's either the splitter or the changeup. Left up a little bit in the zone, and Ellis pulls it foul. Looks like the splitter had stayed inside and uh, pulled foul by Ellis. That's Izaki ahead, 0 and 2. To left center field, Manny on the move, and he'll move over to make the catch two down. To the bag at first goes Kendall with now two outs. So two down for Nick Swisher, the number three hitter in the A's order. Struck out on the first single to right in the third inning. Right fielder, Nick Swisher. Choice by the Oakland Athletics back in 2002 it was the 16th selection overall. It's actually, the compensation pick by the A's from the Red Sox. Compensation for loss of free agent Johnny Dean. Pitch outside to Swisher. Of course, the son of Steve Swisher caught 509 games in the major leagues between the Chicago Cubs, the St. Louis Cardinals, and the San Diego Padres. His dad was also a first round draft choice. Red Sox, the 21st overall selection back in 73. 
Three and one now to Nick Swisher. Two outs. Jason Kendall led off the inning with a walk. Still standing at first base with two away here in the fifth. Full count now to Swisher. They mentioned Nick Swisher of being the son of Steve Swisher. And of course, a big week for the Mills family is Brad Mills, his son Paul, expected to be drafted fairly high coming up on Thursday. So a very exciting time. I saw Bo yesterday in the uh, Red Sox Hotel along with his dad and uh, had a workout today over in San Francisco in front of some scouts. Swisher winds it down the left field line. It is a fair ball headed for the corner. Kendall, who can run for a catcher, coming around from first base. He'll score the second A's run. A two-out RBI for Nick Swisher as Oakland on top now, two to nothing. A lot of fastballs and then at bat to Swisher from Dice K, and he takes the fastball that's away to the opposite field. See all those pitches away from him, and once again on this final pitch away, actually a little bit off the outside edge and right down that left field corner to drive in the run. Of course, getting back to uh, Brad Mills' son, Tina Sebastian had a very nice sit down interview today with uh, Brad Mills about the draft coming up, and uh, that'll be on the pregame show either tomorrow. What Thursday so it's a very good interview and uh, it shows a very proud dad anxious for a big day and an exciting time for the Bills. Bull Bills looks a lot like Tom Brady. Yeah, he's a good looking kid. He really is and big strong third baseman. More hair than his dad. <laughs> Was telling Tina Servasio before the game, and again we'll hear that soon. But a lot of the family going to be here for that uh, draft, which is going to be on television for the first time, which will be exciting. We've seen the NFL draft for so many years. Uh, Major League Baseball not having their draft televised. And a special year for the Bills, but uh, even more special that it'll be televised nationally. Swisher at second base with two down in the last half of the fifth inning. The A's on top now, two to nothing. And Johnson with a count of two and zero. Oh. Strike and it's two and one. He is zero for two tonight. He's fouled out to Mike Lowe at third base and fly deeply to center field. Coco Crisp making the catch on the warning track back in the third inning. Dale Scott. And the call from third base. Even the count now two and two. Once again, the off speed pitch, the splitter, and uh, I don't know, looking at that angle, looks like maybe he did check the swing. Those shots that we get from our first and third base cameras are quite different than what the, the umpire is looking at from his angle, which is directly down the third base line. Would he mind if we put a camera out there by him to get a better look? You want instant replay of baseball? No. I think our Yankee Red Sox games are long enough. Can you imagine what they? Oh my God. Bill Scott goes into the hood to check out the last play. And that was a tight end with a six hour and 45 minute game. <laughs> and 3 2. He is off the corner for strike three. Dan Johnson flips the bat. That's not going to excite Paul Emmel. Six strikeout for Matsuzaka with the A's now, the 2 0 advantage.
The factories are begging for new business, and who am I to refuse an extreme bargain when I can pass all the savings on to you? He opens his wallet and buys it all. There's nothing that compares to this all-leather sofa and love seat at only $13.99. You can spend less, or for that matter, more, but none can compare with this competition buster. No, your eyes are not playing tricks. It's that good. It's better than good. At only $13.99, it's untouchable. The competition busted. <clears throat> Ford F-150, we're sorry you can't match Dodge Ram 1500's available 345 horsepower Hemi V8. And Chevy, Toyota, we're sorry Ram Mega Cab is bigger and roomier than your Silverado and Tundra. And since Ram is the longest lasting, most durable family of full-size trucks, we'll be apologizing to the competition for a long, long time. Biggest, baddest, boldest. See the New England Dodge dealers for a test drive today. Welcome to Foxwoods. Can I take those for you? Hey, we're about to break out. Everybody get loose now. Everyone has a wild side. Let yours out at Foxwoods. Everybody break out. Everybody get loose now. Everybody break out. Would you like these back? No. No, we're, we're good. good. Everybody break out. Meet your wild side at Foxwoods. Well, Dice Game at Suzaka and the Red Sox trailing the Athletics 2 0. Let's take a look at the last the strikeout to Johnson. As uh, really in this at bat, you might only see one strike. That ball away uh, called a strike. The check swing there that is also called a strike, but that was well out of the zone. A fastball away. Now the cutter away that Johnson did not agree with. And according to Sox track, he might have a little bit of an argument. Glaske picking up his sixth strikeout as Lugo leads it off for the Red Sox here in the top half of the sixth inning. Lugo has the only hit tonight for Boston against Lenny Donardo as a leadoff single in the first inning. Red Sox have had base runners there. Donardo has walked a total of four. And an error committed by Bobby Cosby. This time Ellis lays it out and makes the grab on Lugo for the first out of the sixth inning. Well, Mark Ellis uh, taking a base hit away from Julio Lugo. Uh, actually, the dive came after the catch. It's almost like momentum carried him to the ground. One down for Dustin Bedroya. Cutting for sacrifice bunt in the first. And grounded out to second base in the third. 97 fielding percentage at second base last year. Major League record, but he didn't win the gold glove. As that went to Mark Redzelanik at second base for the Kansas City Royals last year. Joy takes ball two, two and oh. Donardo does not have a strikeout tonight. Four walks, no K's. And one now to Pedroia. He had three strikeouts against the Texas Rangers in a five and a third effort last time out. Two pitches last time out as Roy grounds it foul. Bob Garrett said before the game today that uh, he felt like he was working his way up to the 100 pitch mark tonight. Three two pitches last time out had a longer layoff this time around. He's not pitched since May 29th. And he will be ready to go 100 tonight. 17 innings, one earned run. None so far tonight. Side, another walk. And it's the fifth walk given up by Donardo. One on walk this time. Well, time now for the Panasonic Plasma Replay so you can catch this again in Chris Rich's detail motion. And a couple of times tonight, double plays have ended innings for the Red Sox. The 6 4 3 here against Lowell. 
and the 5 4 3 to end the fifth inning against Coco Chris. One out, one on for Big Poppy. He takes the strike from Donardo. Ortiz tonight the shift on is grounded to second baseman Mark Ellison short right and last time up grounded out to Bobby Crosby who's on the right side of the infield as he is now. Oh and two to Ortiz that big slow curveball has been very effective tonight so far against David Ortiz he's got him twice to ground out on the uh, break breaking ball. That ball well out of the strike zone. Ortiz to left field and in for a hit. Over his buck to play it up to second base goes Pedroia. That's the first Red Sox base hit since the first inning. That's a bad pitch there by uh, Donato. I mean, he's making David Ortiz chase bad pitches out of the zone on the breaking ball, and for some odd reason, he tries to throw a fastball by it. Now, I know Kendall won this ball off the outside part of the plate. But he leaves it right over the plate, and Ortiz shoots it to the opposite field for the base hit. Well, you think when you have something working with the breaking ball, why not stay with it? So one down. Red Sox with runners at first and second. First time they've really had a threat since the first inning. They had the bases loaded with two down and could not score. Two on here for Manny with one out. Ramirez takes ball one. Walked in the first inning, grounded out to shortstop in the fourth. Toronto has just reached 80 pitches. With one out here in the sixth inning. Two and oh to Manning. Now he's been able to get out of trouble with double plays a, a few times in this game. We'll see if Manny can take advantage of this uh, situation now in the sixth. Well, the A's have turned three double plays one in the second, one in the fourth, and one in the fifth. Waits on deck. Action for the first time tonight in the A's pen, Kiko Calero. A lot of that A's pen in last night's action. Really taking on the 3 0 pitch for ball four. There's walk number six of the night. And again, none of them have turned into runs, but the Red Sox with a golden opportunity to turn at least one of those in this inning into runs as they have the bases loaded again today. Yeah, you don't see that very often where six members of the Red Sox have been walked and they've yet to score in the ball game. Base is loaded, one down for Kevin Euclid, who walked his first time up as Kurt Young, the pitching coach, is headed back out to talk to Donardo. And gives Calero some more time to warm up in the pen. Kiko Calero just getting up. Five and a third effort last time out against Texas. Red Sox have Dustin Bedroy at third base, David Ortiz at second base, and Manny Ramirez at first on the benefit of two walks and a single. Kevin Euclid. Take strike one from Donardo. Two 
total of 82 pitches last time out for Donato. He's thrown 84 tonight. Almost hitting Euclid and knocked down by Kendall lunging to his left. And a couple of times tonight, Kendall has made very nice plays of blocking the ball or the breaking ball, sliding again to his left. with single runs in the fourth and fifth innings tonight to take a two nothing advantage the Red Sox going to do some damage here in the top of the six with one out they've got the bases loaded and the one one pitch to Kevin Euclid outside ball two two and one To put Euclid. Very disciplined is Euclid on that 2 1 pitch. You're trying to get him to chase the ball outside the zone and trying to get a ground ball, have him hook it to the shortstop. Euclid did not bite on it. They'll strike this time on the outside corner, and it's a full count. And that was borderline. Bases filled with Red Sox. One down. The three-two pitch to Euclid. Broken back, grounded at third. Chavez touches third. The throw to first. The fourth double play of the night for the Oakland A's and the Red Sox in a bases loaded situation cannot score again. It's two nothing Oakland after five and a half. With convenient flights every day, Southwest Airlines gives you the freedom to do business out of town and still come home at night. Winston, I'm home! With 23 daily non-stops from Manchester and Providence to Baltimore, Washington, Southwest is taking low fares farther. You are now free to move about the country. My neighbor drove all over town to find the best deal on a cell phone. I just logged on to Let's Talk. They make it easy to compare plans from all major carriers and find cell phone deals that are much cheaper than retail. Like the hot Blackberry Pearl with music and video player, a $369 value, yours free after mail-in rebate and new calling plan. Let's Talk has the best prices, the best plans, and the most free phones guaranteed. Log on to 25letstalk.com or call now to order your Blackberry Pearl. Let's Talk, the smarter way to shop for cell phones. So log on or call now. So have I. No, 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 no. I was here first. As cardboard cutout, that don't count. You have to go in the back. Introducing revolutionary performance headwear from New Era. Get it at Olympia Sports. No, no, no. It's okay. I'm the MVP. I get to go in first. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, Kevin Eugle is still upset not only about hitting it at a double play but a pitch that he thought was not a strike and we'll take a look at the hole at bat by Euclid's first pitch right down the middle for the strike that big breaking ball a nice play in the dirt there by Kendall a way to run the count to two and one ball outside this is the pitch the number five pitch that Euclid thinks is out of the zone just up and away according to Sox track and then of course grounds into the five U three double play and Euclid upset after that at bat about that fifth pitch in that at bat that was called a strike. So the Red Sox have had the bases loaded on two occasions tonight and cannot score. As Lenny DiNardo getting out of those two major jams walking six tonight and the Red Sox have nothing to show for. Now the six walks leading to runs. As Bernardo has thrown 89 pitches through the first six innings tonight, holding the Red Sox to only two hits. Mark Chavez, who led off the fourth with a home run, leads off here in the sixth with a big swing and a miss. 
Quickly down 0 and 2. The home run for Chavez is ninth of the season and second home run in the last two days. Last night's game was to right field. This home run tonight, opposite field for Chavez. Well, the A's a one nothing advantage. Eight out a run in the bottom of the fifth. And it's two nothing Oakland. And Chavez grounds a foul down towards the Red Sox pen. Center field. Chavez with his second hit of the night. Now Chavez was really struggling coming into this series, but two for five last night with the game winner. Now two for three tonight. The final pitch, a ball down, actually out of the zone. It's the split finger from Dice K, but he drops it into center field for the base hit. So lead runner on for the third consecutive inning. Lead runner on in the fourth they scored. Lead runner on in the fifth they scored. See what happens here in the sixth inning. Bobby Crosby, 0 for two, showing bunt pulls back, takes ball one. Fly to right, grounded out to third base. Started the inning having thrown 95 pitches and is out tonight working here in the sixth. The season high is 124 pitches. Added that in the nine inning effort against Detroit in the victory. It's complete game as so we're going to miss that time for Crosby. Pitch down to Crosby. Here outside, and it evens up now. Two and two. Thirty-one thousand one hundred and twenty-seven on hand tonight. Thirty-one one two seven. We're to McAfee Coliseum for Game Two of this four-game series between the Red Sox and the A's. The throw to first is not going to be in time. And a bit of a collision in the return of Chavez. And Euclid's trying to gather that baseball. That ball hit so hard that the Lugo had to, uh, ended up on his back side and then tried to make a throw from there. And then they had Chavez doubled up. You'll see how far he gets to second base, but he just couldn't get enough on the throw from sitting down. And Chavez uh, coming back and sliding right in. To Kevin Euclid at first base. Trying to make it difficult for him to see the ball. One out, one on for Jack Cust, who's been aboard twice tonight for the A's. He has single to right field and walked. It's part of a strike him out, throw him out double play. As he was off with the pitch. And one out in the fourth inning when Kotze struck out. Cust was gunned down by Veritek. Ball 
strike down to Cust. Reaching 124 for Matsuzaka in his complete game effort. He's averaged 106 and surpassed that tonight. One and two now to Cust. Well, he's been beat tonight on an 0 2 pitch to Chavez, the home run, and a two out double by Swisher to drive in a run in the fifth inning. And of course, the Red Sox offense has not been able to capitalize on a number of walks. Double plays have been a huge factor in this game against the Boston offense. Six walks allowed tonight by Donardo, four double plays churned by the Athletics, and only two Boston hits in six innings. Against their former teammate Lenny Donardo. And there is action down in the bullpen. You wonder if maybe that's it for Donardo. Only throwing 89 pitches through six innings tonight. As Cust strikes out. That's seven strikeouts for Matsuzaka, and there's two down. Matsuzaka's strikeout high is 10. He's done that twice against Kansas City and Toronto. That again, either the changeup or the split up from Matsuzaka. Well, the action you spoke of is still Kiko Colero is up last inning. Arcatze has struck out twice tonight against Matsuzaka. Struck out looking in the second inning and swinging in the fourth inning. Strike evens accounted one and one now to Katsu. Red Sox have action of their own. Brendan Donnelly is up in the pen. Only working an inning into third here last night. Retiring all four batters he faced as Katsu a swing and a foul tip one and one. That should make it one and two now. Scale seven strikeout so far tonight. He's got Katze twice already. He's ahead of him one and two. We'll check on Chavez, who's back on the bag. Good off single for Chavez, still standing at first base with two down. Patsy has struck out tonight. Eight games for Matsuzaka. We played six. It's two nothing is. Where can you find beauty, enjoyment, and relaxation all in one place? At JW Parks Golf Course in Pittsfield. Our beautiful greens and inviting atmosphere are one of a kind. Enjoy the serenity of 18 holes, solo, with a friend, or as a group. And relax after a great game with dinner at the Broken Putter. For a limited time, Monday through Saturday, 7.30 to noon, get a cart, 18 holes and dinner for only $33. J.W. Parks Golf Course in Pittsfield. Beauty, enjoyment, and relaxation since 1967. Do you want to boost your sales? You can with Time Warner Cable Media Sales. It's fast and effective. Just listen. Advertising with Time Warner has given me now waiting lists on Friday and Saturday nights and much more business during the week. Let our team of advertising experts get you bigger results and maximize your advertising budget. Get on track with Time Warner Cable Media Sales today. Call 942-3287. The sports arena advertises with Time Warner and so should you. I'm kind of whacked. I'm kind of not your normal host. Think I'm dull? Oh my god, I caught myself. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Where you been? It's sponsored by Obishan Hardware, the greatest show on H2O. 
Lexi. Tradiciones. Pasión. Granada. Green Monster. <laughs> the Impossible Dream. Yeah. Bambino. <laughs> Pecky Sport doesn't work for you. Climbing the ladder. High cheese. <laughs> Rally cap. My English is getting better. There is no language barrier on Nessun. We speak the language of Red Sox Nation. One nation. One network. Nessun. He's on top 2-0 as we head to the top of the seventh inning. This call to the bullpen is brought to you by New England Ford dealers. Have you driven a Ford lately? The new pitcher is Kiko Calero. Now we saw him in the game last night, a third of an inning for Calero. Did have a strikeout overall his 27th appearance. 17 strikeouts in 20 and two thirds. The record of 0-4 for Calero in a very high ERA. Mike Lowe greets him into the game with a base hit into center field. Red Sox collecting just two hits all night off the Oakland starter Lenny DiNardo. And on the first pitch thrown by reliever Calero, Mike Lowell with a base hit here to begin the seventh. Now not wasting any time. First fastball Lowell right back up the middle for the base hit. So he is now hitting 21 of his last 25 games. Surprised that Donato came out of the game, to be honest with you. I know he's had problems with the watch, but man, I'll tell you what, he had the shamrock in his back pocket, didn't he? With all the double plays. For sure, four of them tonight. He threw 89 pitches. The guy who threw 82 pitches last time out, I felt like he was extended enough to go to 100, but for whatever reason, not having him back out there again, especially where their bullpen has been yeah. taxed lately. Exactly. Last night, you used so much. And you don't have Duke, you don't have Houston Street. Embry maybe not yeah. available. I don't think you got Embry either. Apparently Bob Guerin before the game tonight, unless pressed into service. Embry working back to back outings and a long outing last night. Of course, the blown save for Embry last night. Voracek with a swing and a miss. Jason tonight walked in the second inning, grounded out to third base in the fifth. And it's 0 2. Kiko Calero from Puerto Rico. Got a nice compliment from Alex Cora before the game tonight. I guess a lot of the folks down in Puerto Rico catch all of our games. And they enjoy watching uh, on Nesson. Uh, Puerto Rico was big Yankee country, but they're very upset over the Bernie Williams, the way the Yankees came out. And a lot of slid over to the Red Sox side, according to AC. Well, welcome aboard. Welcome to, uh, that's why when I welcome them tonight, yes. I welcome my friends in Puerto Rico. I noticed that was a, was a change up tonight. Great spot to visit. Sox Cruz has stopped there over the years from time to time. And the court says this one misses outside the Baratek. And it's two and two. So of course, a former member of the Cardinals. In 2003, his season ended. He ruptured his right patella tendon in his knee. As an Oakland athletic over the Mulder deal. Oh, strike three to Veritek. That's the first strikeout tonight for Oakland athletics pitching as Donardo in six innings did not strike anybody out. And when you see a hitter take a fastball right down the middle for a, a strike three, it's almost like he's expecting something else. Now that pitch is at the bottom of the strike zone, knee high. It's almost like you know maybe he's expecting an off-speed pitch. Here is Willie Mo Pena with one out and one on. Pena. 
And he's lined to center and walked. Six innings, giving up two hits, no runs, walk six. And did not strike anybody out. And the benefit of four double plays turned behind him. And remarkably, in a night when the Red Sox received six walks from the Oakland starter, could not turn any of those base on balls into runs. And the base is loaded with two outs in the first and could not score. They had the base loaded with one out in the sixth inning and could not score. Two one pitch to Pena. Three and one. Michael Chris batting in the number nine spot tonight for the Red Sox waits on deck. Said it's a full count now. Yeah, not even giving in with a fastball on the 3 1 count to Payne to staying with the breaking ball. It was up in the zone, but uh, no fastball there for uh, Willie Moe on the 3 1 count. One down, Mike Wall at first base. Full count to Willie Mopena. Wall takes off at first as Pena fouls it to the screen. 3 2 breaking ball, and that time Pena fouling it off. A little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Sending Lowell uh, down by a couple of runs with Willie Moe, who strikes out a lot. He does get a piece of this breaking ball and fouls it back. Good swing. Kobe Lewis, who was in the starting rotation, actually replacing him was Lenny DiNardo in his second start tonight. But Lewis up in the pen for the A's. Again, the 3 2 pitch to Pena. First to check on Lowell, dives back to the back head first. Seventy games last year for the A's. Highly used a year ago. There goes Lowell again as Pena again fouls it off. And another breaking ball on the three-two count. That's three in a row now to Willie Mo Pena. He's had a couple of pretty good ones to hit too. Pitch of the bat coming up for Willie Mopena. Ball going again as this one goes to the backstop for a ball four and down to first base goes Pena. That's unusual there. Kendall got crossed up. I think he was expecting a breaking ball again. And instead he got a fastball. He never even really got the glove up to make a catch on that. And how unusual is it to get crossed up with nobody at second base. 
the batter. Fortunate for the umpire Emil that he was uh, between the hitter and the catcher. He didn't get smoked right in the face with that one. So first and second, that's the seventh walk given up tonight by A's pitching. And here's Coco Crisp, who is 0 for 2. He has ground into two double plays. One in the second, one in the fifth. And it takes strike one from Calero. First time tonight that Coco gets to hit from the left side of the plate. This begins right handed pitching hitting a 232. And one now to Chris. It goes lone home run off a right handed pitcher this season. Fourth time the A's have walked seven in a game. Strike and Crisp is behind one and two. Putting the Sox track that ball away, but plus umpires have their own strike zone. Old second base, Payne at first base. One out here in the seventh inning. Red Sox trailing two to nothing. We're standing tonight by Lenny Donato over six innings. High ball down the left field line. Buck into foul ground. Still going into the slide to make the catch. In front of a warming up reliever. Crossing in front of him. Between the reliever and the catcher, it stopped throwing in the bullpen to make the grab two down. A nice play there by Travis Buck as he covers a lot of ground, and of course, everybody gets out of his way. He goes into the slide right in front of home plate in the bullpen area. He missed the plate, but he caught the baseball. So two down and it's first and second for the top of the Red Sox order Julio Lugo was one of only three Red Sox hits in the contest a single back in the first inning since then a ground out and a line out. Robbed of a base hit and a good diving play at second base by Mark Ellis. This time Lugo had a bat in his hand. Dirt knocked down by Kendall. Now those are the kind of things that happen to a guy when he's struggling. You know, Lugo gets the base hit to start the game off. It's a rocket to second base, which could have been a second hit. Instead, it's caught by Ellis. And he's swinging about well. That line drive finds uh, some place that there's not a glove. Pace much slower than Lenny Donato's. The 1 0 to Lugo. Popped up. Back goes Ellis. The Red Sox will strand two more. They've left seven on through seven innings. It's 2 0 Athletics. Time now for Sports Desk Update with Hazel May. Don, thank you. Hi, everybody. The Patriots kicked off their mandatory minicamp at Gillette this morning. That usually means everyone involved has to show up, but for one disgruntled cornerback, he made himself the exception. Tonight on Sports Desk, presented by FW Webb, home of Frank Webb's Bass Centers, how the Patriots are reacting to Asante Samuel's absence. I'll see you all immediately following the ball game. We'll send you back to Oakland after this. from our people who year in and year out put so much of their energy into everything they do. So you can be sure that when you put Valero gas into your tank, 
you're going to get a lot out of it. Valero, the energy to take you anywhere. Hello? Mrs. Anderson, this is Mark Brown. I'm from the collections department of... Hi. Listen, I'm sorry I haven't made my payment yet. I'll, I'll, I'll get it in as soon as I can. Maybe you should call in charge. They'll work with you and come up with a solution that's right for you. When life hands you a little more than you can manage, call In Charge Debt Solutions. We're a nonprofit company that puts people back in control by helping them manage their debt. We'll stop the collection calls and we'll help lower your interest rates so you'll have one affordable monthly payment. Call In Charge today. If you owe over $10,000 to the IRS or state, call American Tax Relief for a free consultation. We've helped thousands of Americans settle their tax debt for a fraction of what they owed. Once we hired American Tax Relief, the IRS stopped contacting us. That was an immediate relief. And they settled our tax debt for a fraction of what we owed. If you owe over $10,000 to the IRS or state, we can help you settle for less, maybe a lot less. Call 800-294-1563 for your free consultation. Boston Red Sox Baseball and Nesson is brought to you by Pepsi, Sitco, and by LP Weathervest. Frustrating night tonight for the Red Sox. Nice game out to Zaka back on the mound again as we head now to the last half of the seventh inning. He's thrown 113 pitches. And as Jason Kendall stands in, a little surprising back out there again, but SK here not over his season high. The season high 124 pitches. Nice complete game effort against the Detroit Tigers earlier this season. Kendall is grounded out and walked. Well, there is left and right handed action in the Red Sox bullpen. Lopez and Donnelly throwing. Slaps it foul off to the right. It's 0 and 2. to grab it for out number one. Kind of a sinking line drive to the right of Pedroia. Nobody. Nobody. A little top spin on it from Kendall and uh, Pedroia is able to pick it before it hits the dirt. <laughs> one down here in the seventh inning back up to the top of the order for Travis Buck who's one for three tonight. Single in the third inning. This one misses for ball one to Buck. And 14th against the Tigers. Matsuzaka throwing his first career complete game in the majors. This Red Sox rookie to do so. Since Tim Ben Eggman did it July 29th of 1994. A 7-2 win against the Milwaukee Brewers. Who is that? Tim Ben Eggman. I don't remember. He spent most of his career in Pawtucket for the Paw Sox, but uh, for the Red Sox in 1994. Well, I probably did the game, but I don't I'm remember. Sure. I'm sure you did. <laughs> To Buck. He takes him, takes strike one, three and one. Matsuzaka with eight strikeouts tonight. He has walked only two batters. And there's strike two. Buck thought he had ball four, but gets the bad news from Paul Emmel. Yeah, he didn't like that call at all. He thought that ball was up and away. And on Sox tracks, I think it'll show you that. Three 
reaches out, chops it up over the mound. On the move is Lugo. Throws in time, but dug out by Euclid. That was in the dirt. And Kevin went to the backhand to retrieve it. Two down. Now, tomorrow, 9 o'clock, Olympia Sports presents the Boston Globe pregame show with John Carrot and Dennis Eckersley. They'll have an exclusive Hello. interview with Theo Epstein regarding Thursday's draft. We played nine innings with Julio Lugo and Gordon Needs with the latest Major League Notebook. That's the pregame show tomorrow at 9 o'clock. It's all live in HD and it's only on Nesson. Two down for Red Hot Mark Ellis. Strike one to Ellis. We'll get a base hit back in the first inning. Zaka, 25 pitches tonight, a season high. A miss for Ellis, and it's one and two. With a guy who had 13 complete games last year, in his final season in Japan, one so far here for the Red Sox this season. It's a new one from the bat boy. It's one of those unusual ball props that when you leave the dugouts, you have to walk uh, in front of the fans uh, to get uh, up to the clubhouse. And I'll tell you what, that can be a very long walk for a pitcher who comes out of a game, especially if it's not Red Sox fans in that area. Follow that path, and eventually you get to a door that leads up a, a number of steps to the Red Sox clubhouse. Same on both sides. The A's have to do the same thing. Two pitches outside, two and two. Not nearly as daunting a task as a home player, at least in most cases. Pop up and off the of first base, Euclid's in foul ground. It's a 1 2 3 seventh for Dice K. He's thrown more pitches tonight than he has in any outing on the season. The trails 2 0 to the A's. Your flight attendants will be coming through the cabin shortly, offering snacks for sale for $5. Also available in flight magazines for $3. If you'd like to run a pillow or blanket, that'll be $2. You need to use the restroom? That fee's $4. If you need anything else, feel free to push that call button for a minimum fee of $1. How far are they going to go? For 35 years, Southwest Airlines has offered low fares with no strings attached. You are now free to move about the country. Have you driven a Ford? Ford F-Series, with the sheer rugged strength of F-150, the unrivaled capability of Super Duty, the most towing, the most payload of any other trucks in their class. No wonder the strongest trucks out there are America's best-selling trucks. Now get up to $5,045 total savings on Ford F-Series. See your local Ford store and get up to $5,045 in savings. like a fastball until velocity is lost and the bottom drops out. Watch every pitch in clear Panasonic motion. Panasonic Plasma for the speed of sports. Panasonic, ideas for life. The Boston Globe Sports Plots combines New England Sports Page with New England Sports Network. Chara means that much to this team. How do you not hit the helmet? They're playing for their season. I mean, you said it. The Boston Globe Sports Plots on Nesson. <laughs> Back in Oakland, the game summary is brought to you by your local Lincoln Mercury dealers. As Eric Chavez, the hero of last night's game, doing it again tonight for the Oakland Athletics. A solo shot in the fourth off Dice K. Ninth home run for Chavez. They add another run as 
Nick Swisher with a double would score Jason Kendall all the way from first base to give the A's the 2 0 advantage. Red Sox have had their chances tonight as the starter tonight for Oakland, Lenny Gennardo, had walked six. Red Sox in a bases loaded situation when Kevin Euclid would ground into the 5 3 double play to end the inning. It was the second time tonight Red Sox had him loaded and could not score as the former Red Sox pitcher Lenny Donardo shot down the Red Sox for his six inning effort. We saw Kiko Calero pitch the seventh and now Marshall in for the second straight night pitches the eighth. Now he pitched a third of an inning last night against the Red Sox and this is his 28th appearance overall on the season not a strikeout pitcher that's submarine style delivery. Boya takes the strike and is down 0 and 2. It's a la Mike uh, Myers. Oh, hey, mix an ally in yourself. <laughs> Calero. Calero worked the seventh inning and gave up a hit, no runs. And as Pedroia struck by the pitcher head down to first base. Lead runner on for the Red Sox. I thought that Calera would come out and face Pedroia, the right-handed, then make the move to the submarine-style oh, lefty against Ortiz. But no, they elect to start the inning, and uh, once he gets ahead, he punched Pedroia, so the Red Sox again have a base runner at first base. And run at the plate in David Ortiz. He was grounded out to second base, grounded out to short, and singled. Tonight uh, for the Red Sox hit batters. Uh, the Athletics pitching staff is uh, second fewest in the American League to Cleveland as far as walks go, but uh, not the case tonight. Red Sox still with just three hits in the game. They've had some base runners because of these seven walks, but also Pedro has been hit by a pitch. Euclid reached on an error and a fourth inning. And Boston has left seven men on base through the first seven innings tonight. Tees ahead on the count three and one. This will probably be the last batter I would think for Marshall. Look, Colby Lewis loosening again. Broken bat pop up. In comes Crosby to make the catch, and Pedroia is on the ground between first and second. He fell. And it turns into a double play, the fifth of the night for the Oakland A's. Well, now they'll figure out all kind of ways to turn double plays. And Pedroia just completely, I don't know if he tripped, but he fell. There's no question about that. A broken bat by David Ortiz that Chavez makes the play on with the shift on, and they double up Pedroia at first base. That ball inside and it jams David Ortiz for the pop on. Let's watch what Pedroia does. Backing off, backing off. Oh, the bat back. was going his direction. That's what it was. It looks like he hit the deck to avoid the bat and gets doubled up. He's watching the bat right there and then just fell. This has been a wacky night as far as double plays go. Five of them turned tonight by the A's. It's 2 nothing. Oakland, two down in the eighth, and a pitching change back after this. The other day, my neighbor set out to find the best deal on a cell phone, and so did I. She drove all over town convinced that the big retailers offer the best deals. No, we're out of that phone. I just went to my computer and logged on to Let's Talk. They make it easy to compare plans from every major carrier. And Let's Talk is the best way to shop for all the latest cell phones. You can order online or call toll free for deals you won't find anywhere else. Like the hot Blackberry Pearl with music and video player, a $369 value, yours free after mail-in rebate and new calling plan. Let's Talk is easy, uncomplicated, and their deals are much cheaper than retail. I would like to order that. Keep your old number or get a new one. Let's Talk has the best prices, the best plans, and the most free phones, guaranteed. Free phones and free shipping without leaving home. Why drive all over town when Let's Talk has the best deals around? Log on to 25letstalk.com or call now to order your BlackBerry Pearl. Let's Talk, the smarter way to shop for cell phones. So log on or call now. Must be 18 or older, major credit card. 
Tomorrow night at 9, tune in to the pregame show early for the Domino's Game Time Delivery Offer and find out how you can win a Domino's Pizza Party at Nesson for you and your friends. Don't miss out. Get the pregame show tomorrow at 9 for this week's Domino's Game Time Delivery Offer. Well, the new pitcher on for the A's fourth of the night. It's Colby Lewis. Uh, he was called up from Triple A Sacramento back on May 22nd. He's made one start, five appearances overall, and he's had his problems. Six and two thirds, 14 hits, 10 hit, uh, 10 are in runs allowed. And the opponents hitting 452 off Lewis. And he takes ball one from Lewis as Ramirez has walked twice in the game tonight. Towards right center field. Swisher is there to make the catch. We have played seven and a half from Oakland tonight. It's two nothing A's. Having a half ton with the most leg room and a fancy rear seat is great. But truckers want to know if it's still got some truck left in it. We'll put it this way. If it'll draw bar pull 6,400 pounds of dead weight, towing 10,100 pounds is a walk in the park. Hello, Dolly. Available on the all-new Tundra Crew Max, the truck that's changing it all. What if whales watch where they were going? They don't. That's why Irving does. We moved the shipping lane to avoid endangered right whales. Working with the New England Aquarium to find a safe solution. Giving nature the right of way. That's my what if. So we've got the three shows and then we have the signing at the summer book fair. But then we've got the two meetings after that. I right, so we should We got a situation here. Segment with Rachel. Hey, Ray. Rachel, I got you some iced coffee, some Dunkin' Donuts. Fantabulous, thanks. Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee keeps Rachel Ray going all summer long. America runs on Dunkin'. Get a medium iced coffee and a breakfast sandwich with ham, bacon, or sausage for only $3.40. Now, this pit sequence is brought to you by the Commonwealth Health Connected. Cover your bases, connect to health. And this is Nick Swisher's at bat to back in the fifth inning, keeping everything away from Swisher. Finally gets a fastball away and throws it down that left field line for a double to drive in the second run for the Athletics as Kendall scores. That'll be Nick Swisher leads it off here in the bottom of the eighth inning against the new Red Sox pitcher Javier Lopez. Lopez making his 19th appearance his last coming against the Yankees on the third back at Fenway Park. Did not caught an out a lot of hit in that ball game and also had only had a strikeout, so he must have recorded an out. Regardless, Lopez 1 0 on the season. Nick Swisher leads it off, then Dan Johnson and Eric Chavez here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Two for three tonight. This one hits Swisher. Oh, it's a tight ball game here. And Swisher is hit with the pitcher to begin things in the eighth. Alan Embry, some question as to whether or not he would be available tonight. Apparently he is. Yes. He's unable to close out the game last night for the Athletics. May get another chance here tonight. Now well, certainly that would not be retaliation for hitting Pedroia. That'd be foolish. Uh, that's just a, a straight out hit batter. And Johnson's 0 for 3 in the game tonight. Johnson 
fouled out to Lowell at third base in the first fly to the warning track in center field in the third and that struck out looking in the fifth. Matsuzaka tonight reported eight strikeouts in his seven inning effort. And a strike for Lopez and it's 0 2. The line on Matsuzaka seven innings seven hits two runs he walked two and struck out eight. Side one and two. Johnson doesn't chase and it's outside two and two. Game three of the series will have Tim Wakefield. Matchup against a left handed Joe Kennedy. Red Sox dealing with back to back left handers in the middle of this series. Right center field and in for a hit. And as that gets down, hitting for third base is Swisher. And the A's have runners at the corners. Nobody out here in the bottom of the eighth as they try to grab some insurance. Now Lopez brought in uh, specifically because a bunch of lefties coming up in this inning. And again that, that ball sweeping away. But Johnson able to reach out across the plate and uh, drop it in the right field for the base hit. So first and third nobody out. Yeah. Brings up Eric Chavez. And then Donnelly has been up a few times tonight back up in the pen. Pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Chavez a couple of hits tonight. He homered a solo shot in the fourth, a single last time up. After he had struck out looking back in the second inning. He was four for eight in the series so far against the Red Sox. Infield in for the Red Sox, obviously, with nobody out. First and third situation. If you run on third, you have to go. Uh, one thing you don't want to have happen is have uh, two outs a double play be turned with you not going and then you get two outs and a man on third so you have to go at third base unless it's something dribbled in front of the mound where you know it's not going to be a double play. Hot up foul. Low heading over towards the dugout. And one of the play runs in behind the A's dugout. He's like, you always got a shot here in Oakland. Lowell ran a long way to make sure. This will probably be the last hit up for Lopez. Uh, Crosby on deck. And as we showed you, Donnelly up again in the bullpen. Third different time that Donnelly has been up in the Red Sox pen, beginning in about the seventh inning. This one has popped up foul back and out of play again. Same spot. And it's one and two to Chavez. Now if you can throw that slide at you now, a little bit off the outside corner, you probably got Chavez. He has difficulties with lefties. Gets a piece, rounding it again beyond the ace dugout down towards the tarp. And it doesn't go with the breaking ball, he goes with the fastball away, and uh, Chavez just able to follow it off. <laughs> Nick Swisher at third base, Dan Johnson crossed the diamond at first. A one two. The breaking balls. He strikes out. That's the pitch I was talking about there. Uh, you 
He just has a very difficult time against lefties, especially if you keep the ball away from him. He's got some give in that front shoulder. You can see it open up and off balance swing. So a big out for the Red Sox and Javier Lopez. Brings up Bobby Crosby. He's 0 for 3 in the game tonight. The shortstop for the Athletics is fly to right. Rounded out to third base and lined to short. And now the infielders have moved back at second and short in that double play position. Inside for ball one. I'm surprised not to see Donnelly in the game here. And this is that's why I thought he was warming up to come in to face Crosby. For Donnelly to have warmed up this many times and not be in the game. One on. Strike in. It's one and one. This against Donnelly for Crosby. Winning into third last night for Donnelly. He retired the four batters he faced. Lopez is 0 for 1. The ball two strikes to Bobby Crosby. Two and two. Getting a run in the fourth on the home run by Chavez. An RBI double by Swisher in the fifth. He's on top 2 nothing, threatening for more here in the eighth. Red Sox trying to keep it right where it is. Crosby lines it foul. Looking ahead to the top half of the ninth inning, and it appears it'll be against Alan Embry again tonight for the second straight night. Who's collected four saves for the ace in that capacity and now looking on We're dealing with Euclid, Lowell, and Veritech expected in the top of the night. First, a bit of business here for Javier Lopez and the Red Sox with a count of two and two to Bobby Crosby. Full count now. And he's sending the run now at first base. Any ground ball to try to stay out of the double play. Johnson not going as Crosby taps it foul. A little bit of a surprise uh, right there because even if he strikes out and you and you can't steal second base, stop. You're caught in a rundown. Maybe you get the double steal. Verbally playing Swisher at third base as Dan Johnson at first base gains his lead. Not going and it's ball four. This will load him up. So a base is loaded situation for Jack Cust. Jack Cust. Cust has single, walked, and struck out. And that's with one out here in the last half of the eighth. Fifth batter that Lopez has faced since coming into the game. Oh, 
swing and a miss for Cust one and one. And that's the one you want to hit against Lopez, the one that stays inside. Cus missed it that time. Vertex set up away a mislocation, and that's one that, that, that becomes hittable for a left-handed hitter against that type of delivery. First time that Cust has faced Lopez in his career. Ball two, two and one. Nick Swisher at third base, Dan Johnson at second base, and Bobby Crosby at first with one out here in the bottom of the eighth. Up now two and two. And again, he misses the pitch middle in. Looks like again wants it away. It stays inside, so that's twice. Flirting with danger, but twice. Must have not able to make contact and drive the ball. Javier Lopez throwing 25 pitches since coming in. Jack Cut strikes out two outs in the eighth. And the second strikeout of the inning for Javier Lopez. And that fastball knee high right down the middle of the plate. So Cust had some opportunities in that at bat and could not take advantage of him. Lopez picking up the big strikeout. One more lefty to deal with. Yeah, it's Mark Kotze. Certainly glad to see Daisuke Matsuzaka gone. Kotze struck out three times tonight against Daisuke. Takes ball one this time from Lopez. Price going looking against Daisuke. Swinging in the fourth inning. Matsuzaka had eight strikeouts tonight in seven innings. Now the two strikeouts looking were both on cut fastballs. Say two for seven against Lopez in his career. Strike on the outside corner, two and one. Nick Swisher was hit by a pitch to begin the inning. Dan Johnson singled to center field. Struck out Chavez, the walk by Crosby to load the bases. Then he strikes out Jack Cuss looking. So two down bases loaded and the two one to Kotze. On the ground at shortstop. Lugo will go to second base for the force out. And Javier Lopez gets out of the bases loaded jam. We head to the ninth. The Red Sox trailing 2 nothing. Have you heard about the benefits of a reverse mortgage? If you're a homeowner, 62 years or older, and would like to supplement your monthly income, a reverse mortgage could be the key to living comfortably in retirement. U.S. government insured reverse mortgages allow seniors to convert the equity in their home into cash without having to move or make monthly loan payments. We offer a free information kit and video explaining everything you need to know about a reverse mortgage. Call 800-300-4519. Have you heard about the benefits of a reverse mortgage? If you're a homeowner, 62 years or older, and would like to supplement your monthly income, a reverse mortgage could be the key to living comfortably in retirement. U.S. government insured reverse mortgages allow seniors to convert the equity in their home into cash without having to move or make monthly loan payments. The tax-free proceeds won't affect Medicare or Social Security benefits. And in most cases, you can use the money for almost any purpose you desire, including home improvements, travel, or family gifts. We offer a free information kit and video explaining everything you need to know about a reverse mortgage, including how you can supplement your income using the equity you've built in your home. Wish you could retire, pay off old debts, or just have more tax-free income to do the things you want. You don't have to sell your house and you don't need to make monthly loan payments. But you do need to take the first step. Call 800-500-9796. Boston.
Boston Red Sox baseball and Nesson is brought to you by New England Ford dealers. Sovereign Bank, the official bank of the Red Sox cable network. Auto Trader, Bacardi, your local Lincoln Mercury dealers, and by Southwest Airlines. Well, it's on to the top half of the ninth inning. The Red Sox trailing two to nothing. A very good job by Javier Lopez to keep it just a two run deficit. And on for the second straight night, former Red Sox left hander Alan Embry. Well, he picked up his first blown save last night. He had been four for four until uh, last night. An inning and a third for Embry. Four hits and two earned runs. He had one strikeout. You see the numbers on the season, his 29th appearance. The deficit was two last night for the Red Sox as well as they trailed four to two heading into the ninth inning tonight they trailed two nothing and it's Kevin Euclid to lead it off here in the ninth. He was very frustrated with home plate umpire Paul Emmel last time he was up on the strike two call to Euclid and left grounding into the five three double play. It's one and one now to Euclid. The A's without their main setup guy, Justin Ducher. And their closer, Houston Street. They've tried all different kinds of combinations. Zembri has racked up to four saves. On the ground at Ellis at second base. Euclid sees the first out of the ninth inning. Well, tonight, following Red Sox coverage, stay with Nesson for Sports Desk with Hazel May, presented by FW Webb, home of Frank Webb's Bass Centers. The topics news from Patriots minicamp, including comments from Tom Brady and the status of Asante Samuel. And Pedro Martinez takes them out in Florida. That's Sports Desk with Hazel May. Tonight, following Red Sox coverage live in HD, only on Nesson. One down in the ninth inning. It's Mike Lowell's turn. He is fly to left, grounded into a double play and single. Strike one to Lowell. Well, Embry had four saves in a Red Sox uniform in his time in Boston from 2002 through 2005. Two saves in 2002, one in 03, and one in his last season, 2005 in Boston. Has allowed seven walks in the game, but have turned five double plays in the game. Oh, hits a high fly ball to left field. Travis Buck is back there, and there's two down in the ninth. We are to continue to take something from Jason Baratek with two outs here in the ninth inning. Baratek walked in the second, grounded out in the fifth, and struck out looking in the seventh. Two and one to Veritek. 
Red Sox have been held to a total of three hits tonight. Lugo single, first batter of the game back in the first inning. A single by David Ortiz in the sixth. And Mike Lowell led off the seventh inning with a single. That has been it as far as the hits go. Hold on. And it's two and two now to Baratek. And Lowell. And a two and two count now to Jason Baratek here in the night. Baratek strikes out to end the ball game. A much easier time of it tonight for Alan Embry, who picks up his fifth save in an Oakland A's uniform after the blown save last night. He is perfect in the ninth inning tonight, and the Red Sox are shut out by the Oakland Athletics. Just three hits tonight for Boston, with plenty of chances as the Oakland A's win it two to nothing. Sports test presented by F.W. Webb is right around the corner, so stay with us. Jerry and I'll be back here in Oakland right after this. My neighbor drove all over town to find the best deal on a cell phone. I just logged on to Let's Talk. They make it easy to compare plans from all major carriers and find cell phone deals that are much cheaper than retail. Like the hot Blackberry Pearl with music and video player, a $369 value, yours free after mail-in rebate and new calling plan. Let's Talk has the best prices, the best plans, and the most free phones guaranteed. Log on to 25letstalk.com or call now to order your Blackberry Pearl. Let's Talk, the smarter way to shop for cell phones. So log on or call now. Hey, so have I. No, 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 no. I was here first. That's cardboard cutout. That don't count. You have to go in the back. Introducing revolutionary performance headwear from New Era. Get it at Olympia Sports. No, no, no. It's okay. I'm the MVP. I get to go in first. Oh, 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 oh. Charlie, Henry, wake up. Tom. You're wasting your time sleeping when you could be texting. Left hand on top, right hand, send in a picture message. <laughs> Nothing says it like a text message. Dad. Text IM Picks and Flicks as much as you want to anyone on any network in the U.S. when you switch to the new Verizon Wireless Family Share Plan. Buy Dad an LG and make him an ESPN MVP. Only with VCAS. Verizon Wireless. Well, the Red Sox shut out tonight by the Athletics 2 0. The play of the game is brought to you by Foxwoods Resort Casino and the Red Sox tonight. Hitting into five double plays. A bases loaded ending double play here. Chavez unassisted the first base. And Ortiz later on in the game, a bloop where Petroya falls down. And double play here. Five tonight against the Red Sox. Frustration in Boston uniforms. Two to nothing. The Oakland Athletics take this one tonight. For Jerry Remy and Tina Sebastian, I'm Don Rosillo saying good night from Oakland. Visit Nesson.com or New England Sports Live Online. This has been a presentation of Nesson, New England's most watched sports network. Stay tuned next for Sports Desk with Hazel May coming up right after the break. Best sandwich soup, salad, and of course, Bagel Cafe with 20 locations in Eastern Mass. Your resume looks solid. Ten years experience, huh? That's correct. Impressive. And do you have references? <laughs> Millions. Nice. Well, I'd say you've got all the qualifications we're looking for. Does everyone agree? Looks good to me. So I can make all the calls I want? So we With 10 years of experience and over 2 million customers, Comcast is ready to be your phone company. Sign up for Comcast Digital Voice with unlimited nationwide calling. Plus, add Comcast high-speed internet and get both for just $69 per month for one year. So call today. 
When you're on the go, you need the convenience, quality, and pricing that you'll always find at ExtraMart. Convenience. Everything you need is priced right and ready to go. Quality. ExtraMart has their own extra cafe gourmet coffee, delicious deli joe sandwiches, and extra fuels gasoline. Great prices. ExtraMart features everyday low prices and value specials. All this month at ExtraMart, 32 ounce vitamin water is specially priced at just two for three dollars. In every corner of New England, ExtraMart is just around your corner. It's highly refined. It's imported by the barrel. And it's another thing you shouldn't guzzle while driving. Now Dodge goes the distance with our most fuel-efficient lineup ever. Like Charger with 28 highway miles per gallon. Caliber with 32 highway miles per gallon. And the all-new Avenger SE with 30 highway miles per gallon. Maximize your miles with our most fuel-efficient line of vehicles ever. Now get 0% financing plus $500 bonus cash on Charger and Avenger. What a sight for Patriots fans. Mini camp at Gillette Stadium underway Tuesday morning. Tom Brady getting to know one of his newest targets a little better. Yes, that would be Randy Moss. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Sports Desk presented by FWM, home of Frank Webb's Bass Centers. I'm Hazel May. My thanks to Eric Fried for pinch hitting Monday for me. Now, while we're on the topic of getting back to work, the Patriots were doing just that on Tuesday. One day after strutting their stuff on a soggy golf course, the Pats were back in familiar and much drier surroundings Tuesday for the start of a three-day mandatory minicamp. Now, all the notables were present and accounted for, but there was one key defensive back missing on day one. Asante Samuel, the player not at all happy with the franchise tag, was not at camp. Instead, he was camped out at home. Here's Catherine Tappan. Mandatory minicamp apparently doesn't mean a thing to Asante Samuel. He told the Boston Globe that he's prepared to not even show up until week 10 of the season. Negotiating tactic or not, number 22 will not be here this week and possibly not at all. It doesn't feel like a void, no disrespect to Zant, but because we don't go out there thinking about Asante like that as far as, you know, is Asante going to be here? Is Asante not going to be here? Put it this way, if I'm thinking about Asante, then I'm not thinking about my job. That means I'm not going to be here. So I need to be thinking about myself, and I think everybody does a great job of thinking about themselves and what they need to do to help the team out. Right now my philosophy is to coach the team that's here today and tomorrow. That's long term for me. With no insight from Bill Belichick on Samuel's contract situation, we're left to assume it'll be week 10 or not at all for number 22. In Foxborough, Catherine Tappan, Nesson Sports Desk. Well, in the AFC, the Patriots are the early favorites thanks to some offseason additions. Now, even though New England made it to the AFC Championship game last season, the team landscape looks a bit different. It's early, so from the sound of it, the new faces are just trying to fit in. You know, to come here with a great group of guys and just work hard and improve and try to get some chemistry going. Yeah, I'm new, so, you know, you're just here trying to, you know, you get in your playbook and you learn and you pick Teddy's brain and everybody else next to you and just try to get in sync with everybody else. But, uh, of course, you know, it's a learning process. We're, we're out there working with each other. We're all teammates. We're out here to win games, and, and that's the bottom line. So any way we can uh, help each other do that and help our team, that, that's what we're going to do. I don't want to say there's nothing to be excited about, but at the same time, you know, we're, we're just starting to work. This is, this is only the very beginning. We got a real long ways to go before we can, before we can even start thinking about game preparation. I mean, we got to get ourselves better individually first. So, um, that's the main thing I'm working on is trying to get myself better, and uh, you know, doing the things that I can do to help this team. We're not done with our Patriots coverage. We'll have plenty more from minicamp later on in the show, including a look at Tom's targets for the upcoming season. And we'll also hear number 12's comments about impending fatherhood. That's all coming up in just minutes. In other AFC East news, the Miami Dolphins have finally come to a deal with the Kansas City Chiefs acquiring quarterback Trent Green for a fifth round pick in 2008. The move likely ends the Dante Culpepper era down in Miami and gives the team time to develop QB John Beck, who they drafted out of BYU in the second round of this year's draft. Turn into baseball for just a moment. You know the Red Sox are having a banner season so far when they're trying to avoid their longest losing streak of the season, three games. Tuesday night, coming off a marathon 11th inning loss, the Sox sent Daisuke Matsuzaka to the mound for game two of four in Oakland. In return, the A's counter with former Sox reliever and rocker Lenny Donardo. Well, the one 
Check out old friend Bernardo in his new gear, making his first ever start against his former team. And the Sox threatening right away. First inning, bases juiced for Mike Lowell. But Donardo gets Lowell to fly out to Travis Buck. And when he escapes a jam. Meanwhile, Daisuke Matsuzaka trying to rebound after being battered for 12 hits and six runs in a loss to the Indians last Wednesday. Daisuke looking sharp early on. In the first, gets Nick Swisher whiffing at the nasty hook there. On to the second. Monday's here, Eric Chavez completely baffled. And then Marcotze caught admiring to end the inning. Matsuzaka clean through three. Let's jump now to the fourth. Sox with one on and one out. Lowell, the grounder to short. Nice grab off the hop by Bobby Crosby. Oakland turn in the 6-4-3 DP to end the inning. Some nice defense behind Lenny Bernardo there. Bottom four, dice game making a mistake. This is what it looks like. Fastball up in the zone. Chavez crushes it. Ball's long gone. Solo shot, number nine of the season and second of the series for Chavez. A's drop first blood here, leading one nothing. More trouble in the fifth. It's Swisher at the dish with two down. He takes Matsuzaka the other way. And this is trouble. Jason Kendall's got wheels, so he motors all the way around from first. And Oakland now has a 2-0 advantage. To the six, Sox threatening once again. Manny up with two on. Donardo issuing the free pass. The six block allowed by Donardo. So the Red Sox once again in business here. Base is juice. One down for a hot hitting Kevin Euclid. But once again, the Sox. Can't get it done. You grounds the third. Chavez tags, fires the first inning ending double play. Those will kill you. Fourth twin kill and turn by Oakland. Frustration setting in for Euclid and Sox offense. So the seventh we go. Donardo done. Kiko Calero on in relief. Coco Chris pops one in a foul territory. Buck on the run, sliding. Got it. Nice catch. Buck making a bit for a perfect 10 on Sunday. You'll have to find out if he did. More issues for the Sox in the eighth. David Ortiz, 3-1 pitch. Broken bat flare. Well, I'm sorry, you should have seen it. But now we're going to take it to the ninth. Alan Embry trying to close this one out just the day after going a two-run lead against the Sox. The former Red Sox with fine redemption gets uh, Jason Barrett to go down looking to end it. The A's send the Red Sox to their season-high third consecutive defeat. 2 nothing's the final. The Sox got shut out by the A's. Matsuzaka went seven innings, allowing two earned runs on seven hits. He struck out eight. Matsuzaka falls to seven and four now. Lenny DiNardo improves to two and two on the year. The other former Red Sox, Alan Embry, as you saw, gets his fifth save of the year. And the local nine have now lost three in a row, five of the last six. That brings us down the pipe with FW Webb. Sox and A's meet up for game three of their series Wednesday night right here on Nesson. High def coverage gets underway for you with a pregame show at 9 p.m. Rookie Tyler Clippard facing Mark Burley as the Yankees face the White Sox. We jump to the top of the six, tied at one. Runners on the corner, Bobby Abreu chops one, and that'll get through the right there. Johnny Damon comes in to score. Derek Jeter headed for 30 safe. Next batter, 2-1 Yankees here. Alex Rodriguez driving one deep to center. That'll go off the wall. Jeter comes into play. A-Rod with an RBI double, 3-1 Yankees. And then with Abreu a third, Jorge Posada with a fly to right. Abreu tags. Jermaine Dye makes a throw. It's a good strong throw, but Abreu just beats the tag. 4-1 Yankees. Two in the six. That's Hideki Matsui grounding one down the right field line. A-Rod scores. It's 5-1 Yanks, adding insult to injury in the top of the ninth. You guessed it, it's him again, A-Rod. That's a beast of a shot. Home run number 21, Yankees win 7-3 thanks to a five-hit, four-run, six-inning. New York now 11 and a half goals back. Sports desk off to a good start when we come back. Pedro takes a big step in Florida, but how did he feel after his return to the mound? They didn't have the luck of the Irish at the draft lottery, but the Celtics now have their Irish eyes set on a few potential picks. And the current All-Star balloting totals are in the latest on how one of the Red Sox hottest hitters is doing at the polls. We'll be demanding a recount, I promise, after this. Sports Desk is presented by FW Webb, home of Frank Webb's Bat Centers. Visit us online at www.frankwebb.com. 
Do you need a home loan? Let us help you today. Here at the National Mortgage Center, you are our valued customer. Imagine having up to three banks competing for your business. It's true. I made one fast and easy phone call, I was approved, and I received three great offers to refinance my home. Homeowners, wouldn't you prefer the banks competing for your business? Call this number right now and receive up to three free quotes for your home loan needs. I was dangerously in debt. My credit was in the low 500s. But after one quick phone call, I was approved for three life-changing offers. And now I'm debt free. Cash in today. Get money for debt consolidation, home improvements, even vacations. Our banks have the lowest rates in the industry. Poor credit? No problem. Call our loan hotline today and receive up to three free quotes. It's that easy. The National Mortgage Center helped me. They can help you too. All homeowners are approved for up to three free quotes. So call our 24-hour loan hotline now. Let Nesson wrap up your busy sports weekend in just 35 minutes every Sunday night with Sports Desk Lights Out presented by FW Web. Catch it Sundays at 11.25. The weekend isn't over until it's lights out. Remember when Pedro Martinez told a media gathering that he could probably throw better and harder than Roger Clemens and was in better condition to boot. While well, Tuesday he took one big step towards proving it. The Mets ace threw off a mound for the first time since rotator cuff surgery last fall. Petey, a three-time Cy Young Award winner, threw 31 pitches after warming up with seven throws. Before that, he threw on flat ground from 120 feet at the Mets Spring Training Complex in Port Lucie, Florida. The 35-year-old right-hander was 9-8 with a 4.48 ERA last season as the Mets won the NL East for the first time since 1988. You know, I, I, I was hesitant to actually uh, get to the mound and, and, and see how it felt. I, I, I thought it was going to be like more like I was going to be rushing or sliding over. But my legs are in really good shape, and Chris keep telling me that, that, that I'm, I'm free and loose to, to use my legs. And uh, I, I was trying to make sure that I didn't rush or I didn't go too, too hard, uh, yeah, especially on the first 15 throws. Uh, but everything else after that, it just felt like right at home. In anticipation of their number five pick at this year's June 28 NBA draft, the Celtics have confirmed that two of the players they are considering will be in town Thursday for pre-draft workouts. Florida game. State forward Al Thornton will be working out and walking for the green. Thornton is, without a doubt, a top five selection. The six foot eight forward averaged almost 20 points a game for the Seminoles. Thornton is a super athletic forward who's an excellent perimeter defender who can bust out for big games offensively. Like Greg Oden, he possesses an NBA-ready body. Florida's Corey Brewer is confirmed for the pre-draft workout. The six foot nine small forward had the best perimeter defense in all of college basketball. Brewer's offensive skills have improved. He's a decent scorer. He's got good range on his jump shot and can get out on a fast break and finish well. Brewer could step in almost immediately and battle for a starting swingman position for almost any team. Don't you dare change the dials. Stay with us and get to know Tom's targets as far as what he thinks of fatherhood. Plus, check for hanging chads because one sock slugger is getting the Florida treatment at the All-Star Polls. And could number one keep from getting fried in France? French Open highlights are right around the corner. Life, it's full of beautiful moments you wish could last forever. But life speeds by and fast forward. You need to press pause and prepare for the future. Since 1907, SBLI of Massachusetts, an A-plus rated company, has been providing high quality life insurance protection with a no-nonsense approach at some of the lowest rates in the country. Call or go online now to get a free no-hassle quote in just minutes. See how much you can save with SBLI. Don't wait, call or go online now. Dave? Hey, Victoria. Gosh, hey. I haven't seen you in so long. Where yeah, have you been? Yeah, I've, yeah, I've been around. I was in Vegas. Oh, okay. What'd you do there? I ate. Went to restaurants. Bradley Ogden, Delmonico. I'm a, I'm a bit of a foodie. Well, off on a caviar hunt. 
Homeowners, want to refinance and get cash? Countrywide has a great reason to do it now. A no-cost refi. It has no points, no application fee, no credit reporting fee, and no third-party fees, no title, escrow, or appraisal fees. Absolutely no closing costs, so you'll wind up with a lot more cash. Call now and ask for a no-cost refi. We're America's number one home loan lender, and no one can do what Countrywide can. Call 1-800-641-9421. Back to the Patriots and thanks to their offseason spending spree, big names like Dante Stallworth and Randy Moss will be wearing a Patriots uniform this season. Two tremendous wide receivers with a wealth of talent and experience and with the numbers to back them up. Now while Tom Brady's new weapons have helped the Pats odds in Vegas, the team star QB says not so fast. Once again, here's Catherine Tappen. Tom Brady couldn't have been happier this offseason as one by one his receiving core was shaping up to be one of the best in the league. He even went as far as to restructure his contract to bring Randy Moss here to New England. But speaking publicly for the first time on Tuesday, Brady had a very interesting perspective on the situation. You hear so much, you know, about the new guys and, and I think I kind of take offense a little bit to the guys we had last year, you know, and how hard they worked. I think everyone thinks that we get all these new players and all of a sudden you're, you know, you're, you know, we're destined for, you know, these, these huge expectations, but it's not the way it works in football. Big names like Randy Moss, Wes Welker and Dante Stallworth have added to Brady's already talented wide receiving group. But according to the quarterback, nothing matters until you play the game. Really, talk is cheap. I mean, it means nothing. It doesn't matter until we go out there and we line up and see what we're made of. Brady's crew worked out with the QB for the first time as mandatory minicamp kicked off in Foxborough, and they are just as excited to be on Brady's receiving end. Oh, he's a competitor, and uh, his uh, his his past play proves that. And um, you know, he's he's been a staple in in this uh, league for a long time. So uh, he's you know he's a leader and. Um, and like I said, his, his past play shows everything that I don't need to say. Just his leadership out there, and you know he knows the offense inside and out. So, um, you know, you you almost feel kind of dumb out there because you know he he knows he knows everything, and, and you're kind of sitting there still still new to it. You know, Wes has killed us the last few years as, as a Dolphin. He's got great quickness. Um, he's very smart. I say he's like a, like a Labrador out there. You know, you like throw the ball and he runs and he fetches it and he runs back and he sits in a huddle and he looks up and he pants and there's sweat coming down his face. When day one concluded, Tom Brady reflected on what he wants this team to be, as echoed by Marquise Hill's mother last week at the young defensive ends funeral service in Louisiana. A lot of the things she said kind of, uh, you know, echoed what we're all about, how Marquise was so excited about this coming year and what he really felt of this team and this organization. It was really, uh, I'm sure, something that none of us will ever forget. In Foxborough, Catherine Tappan, Nesson Sports Desk. Now, as a leader of the Patriot offense, Tom Brady is usually the center of attention at these things, but this particular spring, the two-time Super Bowl MVP has attracted more headlines thanks to his choice of gal pals and, oh yeah, impending fatherhood. When a member of the media tried to get all access Hollywood on the guy, Brady was understandably reluctant to accommodate inquiring minds. I, I, I don't want to talk about that much, guys. I mean, I just, let's try to stick to, you know, why I'm up here and, um, you know, life changes for everybody. So there's different things that everybody deals with in their life. Just, you guys deal with, I deal with. And uh, um, I'm excited about this season. I'm excited about this year. And as with life and maturing, um, come other challenges as well. So um, just looking forward to seeing what this team's all about and looking for a, a great year. Now some disturbing news on the day the Patriots player Marquise Hill was laid to rest. One of the homes of his relatives was burglarized. Police would not disclose which family member was robbed or confirm that it happened during the funeral service. A suspect has been identified, but no other information is being released because it's still an open investigation. Hill drowned in a jet ski accident on Lake Pontchartrain over Memorial Day weekend. 
Still to come here on Sports Desk, he's an all-star in every Sox fan's book, but why Kevin Euclid might not be at the Midsummer Classic. Roger Federer tries to keep pace in France. We serve up French Open action for you. And it's a Boston tradition. Yes, sirree, the Scooper Bowl. All the ice cream headaches are just ahead on Sports Desk. Here's your chance to catch one of the hottest games at Fenway this season with an amazing view from the Green Monster seats. The Red Sox Foundation Green Monster Auction. June 16th, the San Francisco Giants visit Fenway for the first time. And the only way to see the game from the wall is with a winning gear. Auction proceeds to benefit the Red Sox Foundation, dedicated to helping children and families in need across New England. Place your bid now on RedSox.com, where your chance could be going, going, gone. Bangor Municipal Golf Course is a 27-hole championship course that will challenge golfers of all abilities and features great practice facilities. Learning to improve your golf game has never been easier. With PGA Pros available for private and group lessons, our restaurant and lounge is a great place to relax. And our full-service pro shop is fully stocked for the most popular name brands and equipment with custom fitting and repair services available. If you're looking for the total golf experience, schedule your tee time today at Bangor Municipal Golf Course. Looking for a change of scenery, the chance to see the country, and to meet new people? Northeast Technical Institute can give you the skills you need to earn your commercial driver's license, an important step for anyone interested in professional truck driving. At Northeast Technical Institute, you'll get the hands-on training that can start you down the road to a whole new life. Call Northeast Technical Institute right now at 1-800-447-1151. That's 1-800-447-1151. Out by Oakland 2-0. Daisuke Matsuzaka went seven innings, allowing two earned runs on seven hits. He did strike out eight. Let's hear now from the Red Sox starting pitcher. Mm, so まあ、インハイのボール球の要求だったんですけど、えー、まあ投げたボールは真ん中、まあ、高め中途半端の高さに、えーまあ、投げてしまった、えー、自分自身のミスですね。あれは防げた、えー、ホームランだったと思います。After getting ahead of him in the count 0-2,、uh, uh, Tech called for a ball high and、uh, fastball high and inside, and I left it in the,、uh, over the middle high and over the middle of the plate, and this was my own mistake, and I think that was a preventable home run. いえあの、特にあの、まあ、すぐ奥をしていこうとそういう話は、えー、していません。はいえー、っとといいつも通りですね、はい The question was,、uh, I noticed you were throwing more fastballs near the beginning of the game today. Was this an adjustment you made after discussing with Veritech in between starts? And、uh, the response was, no, that was not the case. The follow-up question was, is this something you decided on your own then? And the response was, no, I was pitching、uh, just as usual. ちょっと惜しい試合を2つ落としてきて、まあ、連敗中だったんですが、なんかその辺、なんとかチームを助けてあげるという意味というのは、その気持ちになったと思いますけどそうですね、まあ今日は、うんまあ、左のアウトコースに限らず、えーまあ今日も全体的に、あのー、そうですね、まあ、苦労はしましたね、自分自身。えー、そしてそうですね、あのー、そんなにあのレッドソックス自体があの連敗するチームではないので、まあ、昨日の惜しい負けで連敗をしてしまって、うんまあ、もちろんそれを止めるつもりで今日は、えー、投,げ投げてました。Other two questions.、Uh, the first question was、uh, when facing left handed batters, you seem to be having some、uh, problems with your command, especially on the、uh, outer side, and your thoughts on that. The second question was the team having lost some very close games,、uh, a few games in a row, what was your、um, Psychology going into the game to try to stop that.、Uh, the response to the first question、uh, wasn't just、uh, throwing outside to lefties, but I had problems、uh, with my overall command. 
And secondly, uh, the Red Sox are not a team that uh, tends to lose many games in a row. So I definitely uh, had, you know, felt a sense of urgency in trying to uh, stop the skid before my start. Steve, how would you assess your overall performance? So with the loss, Matsuzaka falls to seven and four on the season with what his manager thought of his performance. Back to Oakland, Tina Servacio's got Terry's take. Daisuke Matsuzaka, seven innings. Terry, it was a solid effort by him, just no run support. So what were your impressions of Matsuzaka on the mound? Uh, seven innings, two runs. On most nights, we're patting him on the back saying it was a heck of an effort. I mean, they, they worked the counts. He, they made him work for a lot. I don't think he commanded at times his off-speed. or You know, all his pitches like he can, but there's so much drive there and so much willingness to compete that he gave us seven with two runs and gave us a chance. We just couldn't... Not that we couldn't get anything going offensively, we couldn't finish anything off. I mean, we didn't do a lot of double plays and you know, just couldn't push any runs across. What was it about Lenny DiNardo, your former pitcher there, that guys weren't able to complete those rallies and get those runs across? Well, Lenny always has the ability to, to keep the ball on the ground. That's, his, that's one of his strengths. Um, you know, we worked counts, we made him, we took our walks, and when we got the bases loaded, a couple balls we had hard, a couple balls we didn't. Just couldn't, get, couldn't cash in on our opportunities. All right, Terry, thank you. No, they couldn't. So the Sox lose a third straight, second in a row to the A's. We'll get more post-game reaction from the Sox Clubhouse for you in our morning edition of Sports Desk. We'll be back in just a moment. Start your weekend early with Friday Night Fedway, presented by Team Sully Beck. The sooner we get you into the ballpark, the sooner we get you into the game. Every home game Friday, Nesson delivers game day experience. That is Friday night at Fenway Park. So start your weekend early at 5.30. It's the new prime time. Friday night Fenway, presented by Team Sully Beck. Uh, seven in a row retired by Berlin. Euclid drives it to deep center. Anderson back looking up and that is gone. A blast to straightaway center field for Kevin Euclid. Now Kevin Euclid probably didn't plan on going to San Francisco during the All-Star break, but with the way he's been hitting this season, a ticket out west could be on deck for the Red Sox first baseman. Euclid is not on the ballot for the 78th edition of the Midsummer Classic, but fans could and should write him in. Take a look at your leading vote getters now. Red Sox slugger David Ortiz has an over 400,000 vote lead over the reigning AL MVP. The twins Justin Morneau at first, even though Big Poppy is a DH. At second base, it's a tight race with the Yankees' Robinson Cano edging out the Tigers' Placido Polanco. The AL's player of the month for May, the Sox' Dustin Pedroia, is fourth. No big surprise, it's short. Yankee captain Derek Jeter running away with it. Jeter's got a 500,000 vote lead over Miguel Tejada of the O's. At the hot corner, another Yankee landslide line with Alex Rodriguez dominating the Red Sox Mike Lowell. The Red Sox Julio Lugo is fourth. Behind the plate, Sox captain Jason Veritek is in a tight race. He can still catch Detroit's Pat Rodriguez and Minnesota's Joe Maurer, while Manny Ramirez trails the Angels' Vladimir Guerrero for a spot in the outfield. The All-Star break set for July 10th at AT&T Park in San Clemente. We vote for more sports desk after this break. Maria Sharapova does her best to extend her stay in France. In racing news, Jack Roush remembers the man that took NASCAR national. Thoughts from Roush Fenway's top man are just ahead. And it's that time of year again. The Scooper Bowl takes over Boston. Flavorful highlights on the way. Sports Desk is brought to you in part by Prism Consulting, located in Quincy, Massachusetts. Helping businesses lower operating costs through energy conservation. What is Sox Appeal? I don't know what it's all about, but I can't judge. Sox Appeal. <laughs> Three blind dates at Fenway Park. Three blind dates at Fenway Park. It sounds like a pretty good idea. Dating do's and don'ts. Look nice. Look nice. That's a good one. Next. Make sure you know your baseball. It, yeah, I mean. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I get, okay. Enjoy yourself, have fun, and, and just do your thing. Sox Appeal. Do you have it? Log on and show us. French Open highlights for you. Roger Federer trying to reach the semis for a record 12th major tournament in a row against Tommy Robredo of Spain. First set tied at two. Robredo serving. Federer approaches the net, uses the old soft touch to drop over the net. Robredo can't track it down. 
Federer would take the first set 7-5. Robredo comes storming back in the second, serving for the set. Backhand by Federer. Can't get to that forehand winner. The Spaniard takes the second 6-1, breaking Federer's 36-set winning streak in Grand Slam play. And Federer, not the number one player in the world for nothing. A little forehand winner action. Federer wins the third, 6-1, fourth set. Now match point. Federer with the serve and hits a winner. He takes the match and he will advance to the semifinals on Friday. Just backhand. Of Justine Ennin of Belgium facing the lone American in quarterfinal action. Serena Williams, first set, ending up 40-15. Little forehand too strong for Serena. Justine takes the first set, 6-4. Early second set action. Ennin's return hits the tape. Serena chases it down. Pretty spectacular play between the two, and it's Ennin who wins that duel. Advantage to the Belgian. Very next play, Williams. Little drop shot into the net. Can you tell she's not too happy? Match point for Ennin. Serena can't stay in it. Right into the mesh. Ennin takes the quarterfinal match, 6-4, six, 6-3, six, in a lackluster effort from Serena. And the French crowd loving the French-speaking Belgian. Maria Sharapova, all the fellas love her, taking on Anna Shakvedatse. Sharapova serving for the first set here. Shakvedatse will try but cannot run down Sharapova's cross court winner. She takes the first set 6-3. Late in the second set, Sharapova sends Shakvedatse from side to side. And she barely gets to the forehand here, so lobs it up. And the winner the other way. That sets up match point for Sharapova. Big serve. And that's all she wrote. Sharapova wins in straights. She moves on to her first semifinals at the Clay Court Major. Former NASCAR chairman Bill France Jr.'s funeral service is set for Thursday in Florida. France, of course, died at his home in Daytona Beach Monday after a long battle with cancer. Now, Jack Roush, co-owner of Roush Fenway Racing, released a statement Tuesday on the passing of the man who revolutionized NASCAR. Quote, on behalf of everyone at Roush Fenway Racing, I would like to extend my deepest sympathy to the entire France family during this difficult time. Bill France Jr. had the vision, tenacity, and business savvy to grow NASCAR from a regional sport into the worldwide center sensation that it is today. He set NASCAR apart from the other sports with his leadership and ability to give the fans what they wanted, great racing. He will truly be missed. And that will almost put a close to this edition of Sports Desk presented by FW Webb, home of Frank Webb's Bass Centers. Before we go, we take you to City Hall Plaza in Boston for the 25th annual Scooper Bowl. Tuesday, ice cream lovers drop by the nation's largest all-you-can-eat ice cream festival for samples from 11 of the nation's leading producers of the frozen treat. The event benefits the Jimmy Fund. Certainly a great cause. For the hardworking men and women behind the scenes, thanks for the company. I'm going to have a scoop. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning between 5 and 9. Make it a good one. Hey, what's the point? Glow 10.0. Presented by Verizon. Hosted by Bob Ryan. Premiering Tuesday, June 26th on Nesson. That's the... The following is a paid commercial program for Trueback. <laughs> is back pain or sciatica pain ruining your fun in life? Get pain relief now. You don't have to live with that nagging upper, middle, or lower back pain. Do what these people did. I got up and it, I felt pain-free. And it was remarkable. And I've never, I've never had that experience before. And it was, it was so chronic. I, I learned to live with it. Like I said, I stood up for seven years at my desk. It actually works. It's, it's very simple. And usually that's the stuff that really, really does the job. It actually works. You know, there's a lot of gimmicks out there, but this isn't a gimmick. This actually does what it says it's going to do. It really works. It's, it's, it works. It's just good. I couldn't even walk, and I was in so much pain. And then when, you, when I got off of it and I had absolutely no pain, it was instant. You really feel a, a difference because it, it just relieves everything that you had pain-wise, whether you have low back pain or upper back pain. Both my husband and I actually really like it after lugging the kids around all day. I don't have any back pain as I'm lying here. I don't. Is that unusual for you? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I tell you what, I would try, I would, uh, I'll buy one. If you're one of the many, many people who suffer from, you know, a stiff back, loss of flexibility, mild discomfort in the back, or maybe even excruciating back or sciatica pain, and you really didn't know what you could do about it, 
well, stay tuned, because I'm about to introduce you to a device that's been around for over a decade, a device that's easy to use, it's safe, it's natural, it simply uses your own body weight, and you only need to use it for a few minutes a day. Maybe you have a desk job and you sit all day in the same position and your back starts to hurt, starts to tire. Maybe you've had a back injury of some type. It doesn't matter because the true back is something that may be the answer you've been looking for. I went to every kind of doctor there was, from a chiropractor to the spine clinic to you name it, and I was there. And I spent a couple of years going to doctors and nobody helped me. I was even at a physical therapist on a stretching machine and no help. And I just kept getting worse. Then I progressed to where I was throwing my back out like every couple of weeks and it would take a week to get over that where I could actually walk again. So I was really in trouble. I was in bad shape. And one day I was sitting on my kitchen bar stool and I got up and I threw my back out. So I had to cancel work. And I thought, okay, well, I'll just go out and get the newspaper and read the newspaper all day. So I hobbled out to the newspaper box, and my friend Mel drove by. And he said, good grief, you know, what's the matter with you? And I said, I've thrown my back out. He said, stay there. Don't move. I'm going to go home and get you something. So he went home, and he got the true back, and he, he came up to me and he said, here, take this, lay on it, and call me tonight and tell me if it works. So I got the newspaper, I went inside, I laid on it for about seven minutes each way, got up, no pain, and went out and played 18 holes of golf. That day? That day. Five minutes after I got off the true back, I threw my clothes on and went out and played 18 holes of golf. Felt perfect. My back went out to the point where I had to drive to the hospital and I was actually face to the ground walking across the street to the hospital, to the emergency room. I could not straighten up. I was totally bent over at a right angle. Walked in the front door, <laughs> trying to look up at the desk going, you know, my back is completely out. So they gave me some medication and sent me back to my hotel room. Now, every other time that my back had gone out before that, uh, it had been stay in the bed three or four days and then drive home. Just forget the trip, forget the work. I got into bed, I, lay, I, got, I got on the floor and laid on the true back and turned it around and laid on the true back again the way you do it. Got back up, got into bed, and when I got up to go to the bathroom that night, I was like, oh my gosh, it's so much better. The next morning I got up and did it again and uh, went to work. Went and worked with my buddies, went and wrote songs. Totally different experience than any other time with my back. Because with my weight, when the back goes out, everything stops. But that first time, I was like, this is a miracle. And I've called Rodney a, a number of times and said, this thing's amazing. <laughs> you know, this is incredible, you know. Sure, we've all heard people who have tried one type of back pain device after another, whether it be a, a massaging unit or maybe some type of a cream. But have you ever really, really been able to tell by their reaction, by their voice, by their face, that it really worked? Well, I always think that first impressions say an awful lot. Oh, man, it already feels good. Oh, my God. That does feel good. That feels good. Now, that is a nice release right there. That's a relief you can't get anywhere but on this. Oh, yeah. <sighs> that feels really good. That feels immediately better. I could feel that in my lower, Frank. Especially when I go back. Oh my God. Some of you might think that I'm standing here because I'm paid to do this, and, and you're absolutely right, I am. But something I'm not paid to do is talk about my son. And I'm gonna tell you very briefly, he's 20 years old, he's a professional dancer and choreographer, fractured two of his vertebrae, and we honestly thought it would be the end of his dancing career. Wakes up in pain, wakes up stiff, has been using the true back, and he's out there in LA right now going to auditions like nothing was ever wrong with his back. And he's not the only one. Here are some people that would be glad to tell you about Truback, and they haven't been paid. You get used to being uncomfortable. Like, you get, yeah, I don't know how to explain it. You get used to holding your kid a certain way. You kind of do the hip out. 
you know, because you're balancing your diaper bag and your purse and the baby, and so you're a little disjointed. And then you kind of get used to it, so you don't even realize how uncomfortable you are. So it was the norm for me until I got my back stretched out and was realized it's really not the norm. When I first, literally the first time laid back on it, my back cracked like three times, and it was instant relief. It was just, oh, that's so nice, you know? And then every now and then, you know, at the end of the day, you kind of think, that's exactly what I need. Played a lot of football and sports over the years. Um, so I got back started to hurt, and I got what, well, couldn't even move, couldn't get out of the car or anything. Really? Uh, yeah, I had a sciatic, I found out what it was, really bad. Uh, you know, where you roll out of bed on the floor and crawl around for a while before you can get up. You don't want to lay down, you want to stand up all day, you don't want to sleep. Uh, it got so bad, uh, I was going to chiropractors, and it would feel okay for a day. And I'd make it through the day, but then I'd have to go the next day. I uh, talked to a few doctors, and they were recommending surgery. And I'm an avid golfer three days a week and run off short charters. Um, I had to stop all that for about six months. I didn't play any golf, and I didn't run any charters. Just tried to fight through the pain. A guy at our country club, he said, try one of these true backs. It's interesting, you get off of it, and then just the feeling is great. So I tried it the next day. Next thing I knew, I was moving more and more and more. And uh, you just feel better and better. It's like right now, if I come in, I'll tell you, one time I do use it religiously. Go run with me and through to six to eight foot waves to go out 60 miles to my best fishing spot. Come right in with me, five hour ride in, up and down like this the whole time. My back's gonna hurt, whole sciatic, I'll feel it. Uh, right up, down to the true back, and I'll be fine. At night I'll sleep fine. True back's unique patented design is very simple. The spine floats in the center channel as you lie on the device. The 30 suspension points on the center rails are specifically engineered to use your natural body weight to gently massage and stimulate the muscles located on each side of the spine. So the simple action of just lying on the true back is something you have to experience to believe. Oh, I popped. Oh, it feels good. I wouldn't think it would, but it does. Oh, that feels delicious. Richard, you have to try this. That's the ticket right there. Oh, that feels better. Brian, it's actually a good stretch. Where were you guys this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Playing golf. <goat. laughs> I could feel that in my lower, Frank. Especially when I go back. Oh, my God. Trueback is officially listed by the government as a non-powered orthopedic traction device. When research was performed on Trueback at the University of Iowa's Spine Research Center, the biomechanical analysis demonstrated that a single 10-minute application of the Trueback orthopedic device had a statistically significant greater lengthening effect on the human spine. Using the true back only takes a few minutes and can be performed in the comfort of your own home, office, or workplace without disrobing. To use true back, just put the high end towards your head and it instantly goes to work, creating traction to the neck, shoulders, and upper back. Then, after three to five minutes, you can put the high end towards the base of the spine and this creates traction to the middle and lower back. Don't let pain spoil your fun in life. Do what these people did. Order now. Operators are standing by. Have your credit card ready and call the number on your screen right now. Trueback normally costs $89.95, but during this special TV offer, you can have Trueback for only $59.95. That's over 30% off the regular price. Every person you've heard has their own unique situation, and your results will be different according to your needs. But if you're not completely satisfied, if you don't feel better than you felt in years, then we'll give you a full product refund, no questions asked. And Trueback is so good, we don't just offer 30 days. It comes with a full 90-day money-back guarantee. Remember, you can get your money back with the Trueback, but you can't get back the precious time you lose to pain. Order now. I have Parkinson's. And um, it causes me to sometimes walk a little on, I'm not real sure-footed sometimes, and it makes me walk bent and, and uh, makes a strain on my back. And when I use the true back, I get instant relief. And it wasn't for five minutes, it was for a period of days. It makes a, you know, a world of difference. I thank my wife every time I use it because it's made a big difference in giving me relief. When I came in, I, my head was down. I couldn't lift it. I fell very badly and opened my whole head, and that really jolted me. 
and I got so I couldn't do anything around the house. I couldn't walk to the refrigerator, and I couldn't open the refrigerator door, the cabinet doors, because I was so stooped over, I couldn't get up. I have neuropathy, my back has been fractured, I have stenosis of the spine. They've given me every kind of a drug. They x-rayed me and they thought I'd never come back and nothing would ever help me. No operation, they said, would that ever help me. I think we only used it about 10 minutes. I went out walking perfectly straight. I'm walking better than I ever walked. So this is why I'm so grateful for this. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> Because I've worked in construction trades and also being a home inspector currently, I'm very active. I get in awkward positions of climbing through attics, underneath houses, uh, bending over, throwing my back out constantly. It's a, it's a problem I've had for years. It's my lower back or uh, my, mainly my lower back, but sometimes my upper back will go out as well. What I did notice about the true back is the next day, I particularly noticed the difference. When I woke up in the morning, my aches and pains that I had which were in the lower back, were completely gone. And so I was amazed. I was like, wow, that's, uh, that's incredible. And it stayed gone for probably a good couple of weeks. Uh, and again, I'm active. So, and then it came back and I was like, okay, well, I'll get on the true back again. Next morning, it's gone again. I'm like, hey, this thing is really cool. What's the first thing you do when you find something that you really, really like, that wows you? You tell a friend about it, right? Or else you buy some and you give them away? Well, how many people have you ever heard of going out and, you know, giving someone a back cream or some type of pad or some type of device? You don't hear about it very often. Well, let me tell you what. If you have something you like, you spread the news. And that's exactly what these folks did. A friend of mine in Kentucky that he and I grew up together, I mean, he had, he's, I think I've got back pain. His is a lot worse. I mean, he can't play golf. He can't literally, you know, sit in a chair at work. I mean, he has to stand. He's got a desk that he stands behind. And um, he's, he's done it all. I mean, he was right before going to the knife. And, and uh, he said, you know, he said, I do this thing religiously every week and I, I'm playing golf today I'm, I'm coaching my son's soccer team he says I've done some things that I can't I haven't been able to do in years some of my golfing friends I uh, one particular person uh, he had sort of the same nagging problem I gave him one I think he's bought about three or four and send them on to other people and uh, and he has two himself he keeps one at his vacation house and one at his home my brother-in-law had broken his back about 10 years ago and um, he was given one. We, we, my husband and I gave him one, and uh, he said it changed his life. He doesn't go for physical therapy anymore. He doesn't go to the chiropractor anymore. He, uh, he uses it twice a day and loves it. I have a friend that lives in um, uh, Georgia, and uh, he was about ready to have uh, surgery and was on medication and everything else. And I had gone up to visit him. I carry it with me every place I go. I always have it in the car. And he wondered what I was doing, and I told him what I was doing on the true back, and uh, I let him borrow it, and uh, was relieved to him, and I sent him one, and he's never had surgery to this day, and he still uses it. And he had gone to a famous hospital up there that told him that he, that he needed surgery. She was just complaining about her back. She's, she's a scratch, great golfer, and she's a club champion that she was at her uh, club. And so I said, hey, Terry, Try this out, you'll love it. And uh, I said, I got it from Greg, and I've been using it, and she borrowed it, and about uh, two days later, I said, Terry, you know, I need my true back. And she said, I, I really need it. I mean, I, I've got to do this, I've got to go out of town, We've, I'm playing, and, and I said, well, I really need it. And about two weeks later, she gave it back to me. And I said, God, I got to order some of these because I need it. I have friends who have had bad backs who have spent thousands of dollars on different devices, you know, um, whirlpools, different balls, different things to, you know, try to help their back. And of course, thousands of dollars on doctor's bills and for medications that have all these awful side effects and everything. And they try the true back and they're like, oh my gosh, it looks so simple and it really works. True back is so effective that medical doctors, chiropractors, and therapy professionals all over the United States are using it on their patients. 
But what do therapy professionals and doctors use when they need to treat other professionals or maybe themselves? Well, they're turning to Truback. I had a uh, physician, um, a, a doctor, come in to see me that uh, he called me up in uh, the morning um, early and uh, said, Roger, you got to help me out today. I, uh, I was in the shower, bent over to pick up the soap, and I couldn't stand up. <laughs> True story. So uh, I, I had him come into the office and did a palpation survey to see what was going on in his low back and uh, just evaluated that it was simple strain to the back. When he left, after um, doing some manual therapy techniques on him, he was still sore and quite spasm and still had limited range of motion. Uh, I sent a true back home with him. And uh, in so doing, he called me later that afternoon saying that uh, he was in no longer fear of bending over and picking up the soap in the shower <laughs> because he could move again. I love the device. Uh, uh, you know, I've recommended it to friends, patients. Uh, I will never be without mine. It'll always be next to my bed. It just uh, took the, the pain and the pressure out of the lower back. Did that surprise you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah because it doesn't go away. It's always there, no matter what I do. Yoga, every, anything else. Really? Oh, I have back, all the better back store chairs, the bed, every temper posturepedic bed, everything. Just recently, uh, I had an episode when I was working out and uh, got a little careless, and I did strain that same area of my middle back, and right away, I went and got that particular tool, laid it down, I laid on it for 15 minutes, and uh, I got off of it, and it, it never went into its uh, full-blown exacerbation. I was able to actually go to work that day, and uh, I was surprised. With all the results you've seen on associates and patients, you're still surprised? I was surprised, because every other time that's happened, it's usually knocked me out for that day. And uh, this particular time, it didn't. It kind of like stopped the cycle as soon as I got on it. I find that incredible. It's really like that, huh? Yes. I took the uh, true back up to uh, a uh, one of the... Uh, best known neuromuscular therapist in the world. As a matter of fact, he's the person that developed neuromuscular therapy. And I had him lay on the unit and I put a towel around his neck and did some tractioning on him and probably four or five different vertebrae in his back adjusted and popped back into place. Where We're not chiropractors, that's not what we do, but uh, bones go back on their own. He was very impressed with it. Yeah, he wanted to see if he could uh, get them in the clinic as well. One day I was going out putting a motor on my boat uh, 15 horsepower motor, I'd lifted it, put it on the transom, and, and, and during that event, my, I got severe pain, locked spasm in my, in my thoracic spine, and I was, at, I was mad because I thought I was going to not be able to fish. I remembered the true back I had, I said, man, I bet this is going to be the ticket. So I went, got it out, laid on it for about five minutes, my pain was gone, uh, the spasm was gone, I proceeded to go out fishing for the day, and I continued to use it over the next several days, and uh, yeah, it, it was amazing at relieving the, 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 the spasms. If you suffer from back pain, it's likely you get through your day by trying to keep busy, keep your mind off of it, work your way through it, but what happens when you go to bed at night? Can you even find a comfortable position? Do you toss? Do you turn? Do you get that restive sleep that you so desperately need? Or do you wake up tired and in pain and the cycle starts all over again? Well, if that sounds like you, the true back may just be the answer that you're so desperately seeking to get that good night's sleep. I couldn't find a comfortable position to lay in at night. I would be on my side, I'd be on my back, I'd be on my stomach. I couldn't find a spot that didn't hurt my back. And after using this on a regular basis, I've been able to sleep very comfortably with, in any position I want to. I just get on it when I know I've got lower back strain. I lay down, I watch TV for 30 minutes, and, and I'm fine the next day. And, I, and, and the difference is, is you sleep a lot better as well. Have you gone? Are you asleep? Yeah. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> I have a lot of trouble sleeping, and my back bothers me a lot when I sleep, and I can tell a difference now when I'm, when I wake up in the morning, I feel better. I'd get tightened up, my spine would tighten up, uh, up in the neck region and lower back, and even the central back some. It was just hard to get any, any sleep. I was just restless at night. After a period of uh, probably a month or so of using that, it relieved a lot of the pain in my, in my spine and my neck region, and I was able to get a good, good night's rest. When I'd wake up and, and the pain, pain wasn't there anymore, so I felt good, and I felt good the rest of the day. If you've ever experienced it, I'm sure you'll have to agree that sciatica pain is probably one of the most excruciating 
pains of all, and it's something that normally there's not a lot you can do about. Now, we're not saying that the true back will heal or cure your back problems, but what we are saying is, and what you're going to hear the sciatica sufferers say is, it provides relief. For people that suffer from sciatic nerve, from back pain, you don't think there's ever any relief. Uh, and with true back, there is. It, it just, it's a miracle. She had sciatic nerve, uh, you know, where she was getting pain, and using the back machine uh, has helped her immensely. It's almost like we run to see who gets to use it first. So you're always weeding and bending over and cleaning, and it, uh, it's hard on your back. It's hard on sciatic nerve. It goes down the back of your leg. If I'm going to be doing, like, yard work, I automatically will do it as soon as I come in. My husband has sciatica about two or three times a year. And he'll come home from work in just severe pain. And I'll say, get on the true back. And he's a real skeptic, although he's seen what it's done for me. So the first time, he laid on it, and it went away after about three times he got on it. So every time it happens to him, he gets right on the true back, and it goes away. I had a sciatic, a real bad sciatic problem. And I've, I've been to the doctors, I've taken MRIs and done all that sort of thing. And, and the, the long and the short is that I have got the typical aging problem of the spine, you know, the narrowing and all that kind of stuff. So the sciatic problem was something that in order to keep it away, I have to keep my spine, try to keep my spine as straight as possible. And, the TrueBack really does that r real well. TrueBack's unique patented design is very simple. The spine floats in the center channel as you lie on the device. The 30 suspension points on the center rails are specifically engineered to use your natural body weight to gently massage and stimulate the muscles located on each side of the spine. So the simple action of just lying on the TrueBack is something you have to experience to believe. Oh, yeah. <sighs> that does feel good. Now that's a nice release right there. That's a relief you can't get anywhere but on this. Oh, man, it already feels good. Oh, my God. Yeah, I could feel that in my lower frank, especially when I go back. Oh, my God. Not only are people getting rid of nagging pain, they are once again enjoying the activities they love so much. According to a recent survey, a staggering 93% of those surveyed said the true back helped reduce or eliminate pain often where other pain relief products fail. Using the true back only takes a few.